welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. And there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to More Books, Canna Bear, Fibre Oats, Bogey, Michael Kahn, Rob H, Ben White, Maximum Gravy, John Kays, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Will Brax, Mel B. Styles, Troy Shuka, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Neo the One, Lost Cat FE, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Dal West Watson, Muted, Maria Neelands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, The Real Gabster, Liam Nedrick Jr., Abraham Mohammed, Skeptic936, Life is Short, Texas Mike, and David Wayne Foster. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. Person, and he just takes one look at me and goes, I don't like that guy. Why? I, I don't know. I just don't like him. Like, oh. and it, it's kind of like a burden. Like, what about that? <sighs> Well, I did nothing August. wrong. You know, there's there no blame. The guy took one look at me and goes, nope, don't like him. You know what I mean? Oh. What am I supposed to do about that? Kick his ass. Hello, all. <laughs> Hello. Hey there. You, you know what, Neil? You're next, buddy. <laughs> Ooh, can't wait. Oh, you just go on being a good example. Simple. Yeah. You don't well, let and that, that, that uh, brings you me back you, to my original point. You don't let that discourage you to be like, well, if being good doesn't work out, I'm just going to be a jerk. You, know, <laughs> <I> gotta... <laughs> you don't go like that, right? But that, that brings me, I mean, I have no control over this guy. Say, say I'm one of the nicest people you've ever met. I'm generous. You know, I'm, you know, I'm giving out gifts. I'm giving out hugs. You know, how you doing? This and that. And this guy just looks at me and goes, I, I just don't like him. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's because I'm too generous. But, like, I'm, I'm somewhat of a burden to this guy's mind. What, what, what does God say about that? Like, I, he, he's never brought this burden up to me, so it's not like I can go reconcile with him. But, you know, if, in this guy's mind, he just doesn't if, like me because maybe I'm too generous or something. If, if your conscience doesn't bother you about it, you're good, okay? If you're doing it in a good, if you're in a good conscience, you're a good standing with the Lord. Simple. All right, so don't don't worry about what that guy thinks because I know I'm doing the right no. thing, right? Just you have to have a good conscience about it. So you have to check your inside to make sure, and your inside you're good with the Lord, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, because what may bother one person may not bother another person. That's why we all got to listen to what the Lord's telling us personally. I don't know. Many of Muslims has got a good conscience. Is that? I said I know many yeah. Muslims that got a good conscience. You find a good conscience. Yeah, so. They feel they're doing right on the inside. And they're obviously... Well, I'm not going to get into this now. It's a flattered debate. Oh, we're not we're not on live show yet. This is pre-show. Don't let flat Earth debate prevent you from your racist stereotyping, Neil. Go right ahead. Nah, I'm not going to get into it because I'm not going to be. I'll get um... into it. I'll get into it. They can cut someone's head off and think they're doing God a service with a good conscience. Exactly. Okay, now let's get back to Flatus debate. What happened with Sam? Yeah, but that that, that brings me, but that that brings up another subject. You know, if if somebody's say, Never mind, say I was talking. somebody somebody's Never. raping people, you know, what what does God say about about the the hand that causes you to sin? What does He say to do? Okay. Well, hold on a second. I got an answer for that. Remember, there's 
Remember, not everybody's conscience is purged of dead works. Okay, when you're born again, your conscience is purged of dead works to serve the living God. You got to be born again. There's a difference between a born again conscience and not a born again conscience. Well, and that brings me to my original, to my original point. You being a good person, loving everybody the way that you would want to be loved, the way that God would want to be loved, you just being you doing the right thing at all times and looking at instances from every perspective that your mind can fathom in order to make the right decision, I think that holds you to the most highest standard that there is because you are doing the right thing to what your mind can, you know, possibly make out at all times. Okay. And what do you think that does for you in the case of salvation? Do you think it saves you by being good or is, are you being good because you're saved? I'm being good because in my mind, that's the, the most right thing to do to love everybody well, the way that you would want to be. Yeah, that's a good teaching, and the Lord teaches that too. However, that's not how you get saved. How you get saved is to admit you're a sinner and ask for the mercy and grace of God, and then you get saved because it's a gift. It's not anything you could earn. It's not anything you can cover up with love and good works because we're all sinners. That's the biblical view. So yeah, love God and thy neighbor and all that, that's part of it but not for salvation. Salvation is a gift to God. Yeah, you do that after because you got saved. Now you want to do righteous in the Lord's eyes and you want to do good things, not for it, but because of it. What happened with Zanuck yesterday? I had oh. to leave. Uh, oh, I caught Zanuck. bits and pieces. Uh, did he say, I, I heard that little excerpt you put out, Nathan, today <laughs> it was short but it was sweet so Zanet admits you have to measure flat and then he says it's a sphere a step the god ended yes man oh man i love it how this the mighty guy, have fallen he's not mighty this guy lied about coriolis he put himself in the reference frame of the drone or the airplane and he was he's he just lies and uh confuses people and then when it comes to yesterday which I, I can't wait to hear in its entirety, but uh, that little excerpt Nathan put uh, this morning was enough for me. He can't do that with the elevation angle. Hold on, let me explain mighty. Mighty in their own mind. They were mighty. We were nothing but dumb flat earthers six, seven years ago, even now. I've never considered myself a dumb flat earther. They were always the dumb ones with their logical fallacies. I'm talking on them. Same with I'm they, in their I'm mind, not. we were the dummies. I Boy, it, have I they fallen it. hard. I get it. I know what you're saying. So what's that the whole show coming out, Nathan? I can't wait. Welcome to Flat Earth, Sonic. You don't need the Dingleberry Earth dangling beneath the flat plane we establish as the horizontal baseline to acquire elevation angles. No, you don't get the sphere till later, till you calculate that. Later? Well, after you've used flat <laughs> earth to get an angle. But you're saying the sphere bit comes after the flat earth bit. Yeah, your sphere assumption comes after you've measured a flat plane. You've got to be measuring the flat plane first to get to the sphere bit. You know, your sphere relies on earth being a flat plane. So, yeah, you're right. The sphere bit comes later, after the flat plane bit, doesn't it, Zanik? Yes, it does. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Welcome to flat earth. You won't get to a sphere bit unless you measure the flat Earth first. Then your belief in a sphere can follow after you've measured a flat Earth elevation angle measurement from a flat plane that you're standing on. Then, and only then, can you progress in your fundamentalist religious sphere belief. See, all they could do is make concessions now. Think about it. Most excellent. Most excellent. Love it. Got loads of them. There's a lot of meat on that bone. <laughs> I was up at 6.30 editing stuff.
<laughs> so tell me, when are you going to have that show in the uh, after show and everything in its entirety? When is it going to play? Cause I, I don't know. Because because OBS, I'd normally just rattle off a date, right? But because OBS keeps crashing, I keep adding that show to the end of the list. And it just extends the time until they come out. If you're a member, you can... So watch it now if you're a member. What number was it? 1613. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> I, like, I like that. No Bitcoin for you. <laughs> no Bitcoin for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was just looking at that too. Hey, guys. Hey, Eli. I couldn't make it past the Kuma virus. I was just, that was mind numbing with him. Well, hey, Nathan, are you fine uh, with Zanuck? Look, man. Say again. Are you fine with Zanuck being back? Because no. uh, Betty no. took him off show band because he said he wouldn't talk. Well, he was feeding virus answers, and then virus decided to skedaddle, and then Zanuck took over. Under those circumstances, I just tolerated it because he'd already got into it by the time I realized it was him. All right, maybe I can create him a role that just keeps him muted, but he can still listen to the after show. Can't he just okay? be like a normal person that comes in onto the live show? I, in the after show, that's fine. If I have to, if I have to kick specific individuals out, that's fine. Just leave him as he is. He's fine. As far as I'm okay. concerned, every time he comes on the show, he lies. Without exception at the moment. Every time he's been on recently, he's lied. Okay. All right, I'm just making sure it's okay because I thought... I just wanted to make sure you're okay with the, what's going on. So that's all. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. It's easy enough to close somebody's line if I don't want them here. All right. That, that cringe of Akuma virus yesterday... I I just couldn't handle that much. I had to leave. Me either. That was ter I could not handle him anymore. But the double speak. Yeah, Correct. it got so cringy. It got so cringy that I just like my back was starting to twist. I was starting to get scoliosis from it. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, the, I think, it I think he likes be. being thing, yeah. Go ahead, Eli. I was just saying in Master B that uh there was a time where I was hungry for the debate in a sense that I had the opportunity to show someone some information that they haven't run across because they've been preempted by, well, the people who 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 perpetuated this this straw man that everyone's straw manning us with. So I felt, okay, well, I have the opportunity to undo that. I have the opportunity to show them, no, look here, I'm the one that's like the, the, the teacher that actually cares and pulls you aside and says, listen, here's where you're not getting it. And I, I get it. If there's, you know, Glover's listening, they might, they might feel like I sound, uh, you know, just patronizing, full of condescending, big headed. Yeah. Yeah. But the bottom line is from, from, from my personal view, that's what, I thought I was doing until, you know, it becomes six months, one year, two years. And some of these people that we're talking to, they're there. We now have termed them anti-flat earthers for various reasons. And that's what's frustrating to me because I thought, hey, They've just missed the information. They didn't get it like we did, or they didn't get they didn't get the good back and forth. Like Brummy always says, had he not had that confrontation with QE, uh, he would have never seen. He would have still been calling flat earthers stupid. But it took a person with the right debate tact. And, and that could be a different person for each individual, but there's a chance. But these people make me feel like, like people like Zanuck, like, no, there is no chance they're just playing a game. That's annoying. Nobody came here for that. Right. Yeah, just trying to twist up words to get around any awkward position that we put forth and then leave the audience in confusion after a few hours of double speaking, lying talking around the points, answering questions they haven't been asked, answering different questions to the ones they have been asked, etc, etc.
What's that move Zanuck always pulls, Eli? <laughs> oh, well, for an hour, like, you know, you'll be arguing back and forth, and you'll be very clear about what you're talking Breaking up the call. Can you? Yeah, try again. So, forty-five minutes to an hour in, he'll go. Oh, I thought you were talking about why, and you're like, how could you have thought that? But I'm getting a call. Gotta go. Right, it'll it'll have a complete subject change mid midstream just to throw you off and annoy you. Yes. It's that handy suitcase. Well, that's what you've got. I mean, he was, as far as I could tell, using virus to perpetuate his nonsense. And I don't know, man. I, I don't. Once that sort of dawned on me yesterday, it only dawned on me when uh, uh, Zanuck started paraphrasing pretty much exactly the same argument that virus had just been having. But when virus was having it, there was long pauses. You know what I mean? So it's like, all right, so Zanuck's feeding you this crap then. So it's just using you. How sad. When he got to the reciprocal zenith angles or the diverging zeniths, he's like, definitely not parallel. Really, really identical to what Zanuck had done. It's like, what, the, the point that we win, that you can't have it work on a globe, you're going to tell us the complete opposite and lie about what citations say and get someone else to lie on your behalf, virus in this instance. That's why I don't like Zanuck being here. Total scum, here to deceive people. That's when I had to go, when he was about to present a citation. What did that citation say? I'm sure it backfired. Yeah, it did backfire. It didn't say that you had diverging zeniths. Also, he was asked, I got this in the edit as well. Again, check it out if you remember. It'll come out sometime over the weekend. Um, he was asked, is this in reference to celestial navigation, this citation? Three, four, five, six second pause. And then he starts babbling his way through the citation, completely ignoring Brian's question. You're like, yeah, clearly not. Because then when he starts babbling through it, it's in reference to spheres that don't work. And there's no reference to diverging zeniths. So he's really overtly doggedly determined to make sure we understand that it's the very definition and you're like no it isn't what are you talking about you're talking about co-altitude and you're saying diverging zeniths is the definition he goes and gets the definition and it's a total lie and then when i call him on it he says well you can infer that from what i've just read out it's his citation bearing in mind you can infer it so I don't want to infer anything when you've spent 10 minutes telling us it's the very definition of what we're discussing in this case. Um, what were we talking about? Uh, co he said it, it infers it. He didn't say you can. He said it infers it. Yeah, it, it didn't. Was, wasn't it altitude? Um, or, um, co altitude. No, not co altitude. There was one where you read off the definition to him, to virus. And he accepted the definition, which stated explicitly that it was from a flat plane. Yeah, we're talking about. Stand upon. Yeah, that was virus. That did happen also. That we, we're talking at cross purposes. We're talking about Zanuck. Oh, okay. I didn't. I, I didn't make it to Zanuck. I had enough of virus. Well, it was much of the same, but a bit more refined because it was the origin of the information in the moment that you were listening to. That's why you were getting so irritated with it. But again, after I pondered, I'm like, so virus is just being used well the co the co altitude is really the depression angle and it needs a reference point which is a horizontal in the sky tying the vertical zenith of the observer to the star or sun uh, so another triangle right well he's trying to he was trying to claim that as you move away from the star that you've measured or if you're standing below a star and it's at your zenith, as you move away, that height changes, which would ultimately mean that the zenith angle changes. And QE was quick at the end to point, I'm glad he did because I wasn't going to bother, um, point that out to him, that no, you're suggesting that 
the height of a maypole gets lower or moves its angle as you move away from it. That's essentially what he was suggesting. And you're like, it doesn't what? really matter what he's suggesting because he's only doing it to leave the audience in confusion. But along the way, he has to make some very, very devastating concessions because he does actually understand that if he's caught in an overt lie, it'll be hell to pay. Now, misleading people about what a definition says, that's not quite on those levels or on that level, which is what he did. But when he's called out on it, you know, just dances around it. The fact that he's deceiving his compadre virus in that instance and the audience, and he's attempting to pull the wool over my, and in that case, Brian's eyes, just an outrage. Why are you trying to deceive us? Why can't you convince us with the truth? Oh, because you haven't got any, right? You haven't got any truth for a sphere. Earth. It isn't a sphere. So you've got no choice but to try and deceive us. I posted a bunch of slides after uh, I did my moving into the trailer uh, because Brian had asked, but I can't get to because I was moving, but it, it calls it a zenith angle. So it, if it's an angle, it can still can't work with a curved baseline of any kind. So that co-altitude is zenith distance and it's another right angle. It's the depression angle. It's so simple. All you got to do is look at the their teaching from their books and then go for definitions of what these words mean and it's very simple that's why this is so killer and it's got them in such a hissy fit and they're scrambling this guy's feeding that guy this guy's feeding this guy oh it's hysterical maybe it's just a um, information loop though of bad information you know? oh come on john stop Why not? Why are you telling him to stop? He's got, we've got to be reined in sometimes. You know, it's easy to... Not those two, though. Somebody else, yeah. But not those two. Well, not those one. Zanik. I know that virus. <laughs> don't, tell me, don't tell me he's still your little pet, Nathan, after no, all of this. He's just too dumb to deceive us. He doesn't have the information to hand to know how to weasel it in a way of obfuscation and deception. He's just being fed the information by someone who does. Yeah, but he's the origin of scoliosis for John. Yeah, but that... <laughs> yeah, that was... Cool. But the that informational cool. origin was Zanuck. That's the point. Yeah, let me tell you what I get from John. John was a Glober, saw the black swan, used his critical thinking skills, did the research, and realized everything about that... Uh, paradigm was false so he's on this show panel member and everyone knows the rest when john hears another person who's a glober he obviously has sympathy because he was one and recently so i'm with john with that but i'm with neil with the anti-flat earth there's there should be no sympathy for these guys because they're just here to obfuscate in life yeah they're not getting the information wrong i'm sorry john not those two guys and rumpus and guys like that. Maybe people that really still believe they're on the globe for some whatever reason, they're trying to reason it out. <clears throat> maybe you could have some sympathy for them. And maybe they are not getting the information right. So when I was, so when I was compartmentalizing gas pressure without a container as an argument, when I was compartmentalizing that and holding on to the sphere belief, I was no better than them and what they're doing now. Yes, you were basically the devil. <laughs> or for this head. Yeah, but John, how can you compartmentalize that? Hey, that's I mean, not you're his a point. Smart guy. Oh, God. <laughs> Try and focus on what his actual point is. I'm stunned by that because John is really smart. We see it daily. Let's not. Uh, so when I say let's focus on his actual point, no, you're going to focus on that which we see daily instead. So he's saying, I was no better or worse than them. Am I evil? Was I trying to deceive people? Even though I went around doing the same things, assuming the same things, and compartmentalizing the gas pressure without a container argument, such that I didn't understand how it debunked my worldview. Was he evil? Answer, simple. No, he was not. That's his point. I understand that, but that shocks me a little bit. It's, I'm sorry. No, no, that's, that's, that's a good point that uh, John made there. But, Sean, let me ask you something. The... 
the reason you tuned tuned out a virus was because why? Um, I think Nathan's right. I think the information was secondhand, so it was coming out in really uh, malformed ways. Okay, uh, when you were a baller, to what extreme did you go that even came close to virus or Xanax? I, I fed people answers before. Oh yeah, no, I know. But if you hold were... on, yeah, is that so? Okay. Oh whoa, this is news. They yeah. all do it. They're all dumb. They need people like you to feed them answers, otherwise they wouldn't have any answers, would they? Let's be honest. Well, yeah, like um, um trying to think of, of a specific one but you know you, you just get in their dms when you see they're having a hard time you want to help them you know you, you're like well i know the answer to this and you don't do it from a bad place but you know like i would want to do that with one of you guys if they were tripping you up on a point i thought they were being deceptive about i would want to help you and it yeah. was it was the same thing i I just wasn't thinking about it enough. No, no, I get it, John. And and I'm tracking with you, so I'm not judging you whatsoever. But let me ask you something. If if it comes to the point where you're asked to define an elevation angle and a straight line, and you end up saying it's curved when it's straight and blah, 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 would your conscience allow you to do that to yourself? Because obviously that wouldn't be, a, unless you're going to compartmentalize that. I'm, you know, everybody's different. Like Elijah said, you know, there's, I couldn't do it, but everybody's philosophical understanding isn't the same. Right. So that's my point. There is a limit to the foolishness you would allow yourself to be a part of. And these guys, there is no limit. Well, we've just not found it. It's not, not, not to say that they don't have a limit. It's just we've not found it yet. I can clean it. When you can't have a reasonable discussion with any of them because they change definitions of long-standing words, and some of them say definitions don't even matter, what's the point? Well, no, there isn't one. When it comes to people like that, you're talking about specifically about anti-flat earthers. Once they've fallen down that hill... They will relinquish their own claim of a globe in the first instance as long as they get around any rebuttal that we've offered for a globe Earth claim. It doesn't matter that they've relinquished the original claim or that they've debunked the original claim in the rebuttal. None of that matters. All that matters is that we're being shown to be wrong. And if, for any reason, there isn't an answer forthcoming in their brain, they will automatically just decide that there is an answer out there, they just don't have it. And ultimately, we don't understand how it works. They project their ineptitude onto us when we overcome their argument. Because, why? Well, well, because obviously there's an answer out there. There's still a globe. There's, they're never, gonna, they're never uh, entering into the debate arena with the understanding or idea, even, that they might have to relinquish some of their incorrect notions. That doesn't even cross their mind. That's why they go around in circles 50 times. When you overcome an argument they have, they're like, this can't be overcome. It's a globe argument. And we're on a globe. So you can't just overcome it. Like the guy that came to try and get Bitcoin. I wasn't expecting you to come and overcome my arguments. I was just expecting to parrot them out and then laugh at you. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, I hear you, Nathan. But when you do it so concise like that, I'm, I'm left dumbfounded. I really am. Well, yesterday when I was addressing virus on the bubble sextant and the artificial horizon he gets with the bubble at his eye line, I said, is that straight? horizontal straight line all the way to the GPA? He said, yes. I contrasted that with the actual horizon, with the sextant that does not have the bubble feature, where you aim the horizon mirror at the horizon and must correct for dip, where in the bubble you don't correct for dip because you already established horizontal at your eye line with a bubble, spirit level, straight horizontal. But when you're aiming at the horizon where the sea meets uh, the, the air in the distance, 
you have to take dip correction, which is your height of eye above the level of the sea. So you get down there after dip correction, virus. Is that horizontal and straight all the way to the GP after dip correction? He could not get that. But guess what? The sextant cannot work any other way. If it's working with the bubble sextant without dip because you've established the horizontal, then it's working with the sextant with the actual horizon after dip because you established the horizontal, a right angle. He just wouldn't accept it. But they need a horizontal. We need a horizontal. The navigation process itself utilizes horizontal. So we're all using and for them establishing a horizontal baseline, without exception. Now, this is where Chocolate steps in and goes, uh, why are you doing that exactly? Why are you establishing horizontal as the ground? Shouldn't you be, you know, proving it spherical rather than justifying how you establish a horizontal baseline? You're a glober. Fight for globe. Yeah, that oh. was aced by chocolate. There was he had a couple of good lines. The funny one was when he said, "Why are you still using words?" <laughs> I, I have a question about the black swan. Good morning, by the way. Um, would the black swan have been as effective an argument if there hadn't have been like a five-year period where people argued over a geometric calculator of Earth curve? No. Nope. I think the, the length that that argument has lasted is what's making this argument even so that that much more poignant. You know what I mean? Because how much time did they spend telling us that we see this, that there's this thing that's blocking both in the build, buildings in the distance, right? They, they've cemented that. It's in the books. It's on, it's on videotape, <laughs> if you were to say it like that. You know what I mean? So... Now the fact that now they got to fight for a horizontal plane. Mm. I, I got a, I got, I got a shameless plug here. It might be my first. Yeah, go for it. Uh, well, first I'm the comment on one of your best lines ever that went unnoticed when Virus was on last week, and he said, "Yeah, you you look in the direction where there is no refraction." And Chocolate goes, "Do you mind telling us what direction that is?" <laughs> yeah, I heard that. <laughs> well. I had a supplementary point. I just want to make this real quick. Because if the discussion hadn't been about Earth curve and the geometry of Earth for so long, the black swan may not have affected me the way it did. Yeah, I completely because agree. I, was... I agree. From both sides of the argument, you've got to have a really good grasp of what you're fighting against and how it's claimed in order to firmly say to them when you're presenting the black swan, what do you mean you haven't got a geometric horizon? Now, unless you fully appreciate that that geometric tangent point earth curve edge is claimed to block boats and buildings, what does it mean when you say, well, you haven't got a geometric horizon? About as much as it probably would to a newbie who comes here. Um, so what? Well, so what? You haven't got an earth curve? That's pretty fundamental. But if you don't realise that a geometric tangent point is earth curve when claimed to be blocking boats and buildings with the beck in the question proof of nothing perspective hijacking curve calculator we argued with for five years, you don't see the significance of, oh, right, that point isn't blocking boats and buildings anymore. That's the basis of the claim. So, therefore, you've got to know the basis of the claim to be able to debunk it and realise the importance when you do. Uh, so, the shameless plug is, remember, Nathan, at the beginning, I said the sexton is going to lead everyone back to the black swan. I remember. That's not a shameless plug. That's a devastating point. Well, I'm just saying, I. it was kind of like at the very beginning when I was dripping it out and I wanted to keep all the good points close to my chest and wait for them to spring the traps. They've sprung so many traps. Brian has eloquently understood the argument that did his own study. Uh, Mitchell from Australia did an eight month study. Both those guys are on top of it. And they sprung so many of these traps, the diverging zenith, Brian got them, the cord line, Brian got them. Mitchell's video shows the two vertical zeniths of the star and the vertical of the observer. He 
nailed it with his beautiful, uh, you know, the way he did his video. And then, of course, uh, one of the big ones that he helped me set up was the dip trap. To dip or not to dip, that is the correction. And we, we, we had six ballers bite on that before we went and uh, shared what was the trap. And so th there's a 10,000 knife stabs from this elevation angle. More to come from all different flat earthers who are currently studying the sextant like I did. It's going to be a thousand tenth mans at one time very soon coming at it. It's awesome. It is, and I hope our enthusiasm level for it, you know, portrays that to anybody who's listening in. They they realise that it's about as strong as it gets. You know, you, you, if you're actually paying attention and you've watched a few shows, you'll hear its effectiveness when our opponents start begging us to have a flat plane. Yeah, shout out to Zanik for that, and I won't yeah. even retract. I won't even retract that. <laughs> straight on synthetic, but just saying straight up, yeah, horizontal plane, flat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> you, you missed it. Nathan played it again before you came on. Ah, uh, did he? That <laughs> was great. I'm sure, yeah, I knew he was going to cut it out, yeah. I kind of wish you'd have talked to Zanuck from the beginning instead of Akumu virus. Be honest, when he first spoke, I didn't even recognize his voice. It's been that long since I heard him. <laughs> I was like, "That's not Zanuck." Chocolate. What? 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 What is he again? He's a uh, you. You. You had some name for him. The used Zanuck. road salesman. <laughs> <laughs> used globe salesman. Why are you still using words? Yo, you cracked me up when you said that yesterday. No, He's always in the. Uh, He's always in the after after show quite a lot. Um, of course. Me and George have been having a that, that Zanit, he's always in there preaching and shouting. Uh, me and that George have had a few banters with him over the last few weeks and uh, he's just been uh, he's 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 one out there he on his own. Being <laughs> yeah, I yeah. used to go at it with Zanik all the time on the after after show. Not no more. Well, the thing is, um, when you get information from somebody um, and you don't understand it yourself, like Myers obviously didn't, it's always going to come out wrong. You know, it's the grapevine theory, you know, like where you whisper something into someone's ear and then they whisper it into someone else's ear and it gets deformed. Uh, we need to be going to the, the source of this had information instead of the secondary and third sources of it. You're right, John. They did that thing in school where you had like 20 people and the first one hears something and by the time you get to the 20th person, it's all contorted. You know, th there was a point when Virus said something like, something to the effect of what, because I assume it's flat. Now I'm paraphrasing. But it was like something, well, because I assume it's flat, you just think it's flat. <laughs> and I was just thinking, like, what kind of a statement is that? Like, first of all, thanks for conceding you assume it's flat first. So good looking out on that. Yeah, but but isn't, the inverse, is, isn't the inverse true, though, Chocolate? If they assume that it's a ball, they think it's a ball. Yeah. But, but they're the ones telling us that it's, they, they assume it's flat. That but, then the <laughs> but then the conclusion to, to that being flat is that it's flat, and that's ridiculous. But it's okay for them to assume it's flat and continue to think it's a ball. You all that don't that statement basic. doesn't make Oh, yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. No, 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 it goes, you all don't understand basic geometry. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to Bev the other day, and they were talking about how the if P then Q statement is um, a contentious point. Because the, the, they were trying to work out how to correctly address the if P. No, the, the, the statement was if P, P equals Q. That was the statement that they were questioning. Now, obviously, P doesn't equal Q. Q equals Q. P can never be Q. So if P equals Q, 
then straight equals curve, and therefore you can argue equal, equivalently that the, the Earth is a flat plane or the Earth's a ball, and they are fundamentally the same thing if if P equals Q. And obviously they don't equal this, and they're not the same thing. So it's like tr it's trying to like foul that law of identity without making it obvious that they're fouling the law of identity. Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live and there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel, so please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. One last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Sleeping Warrior, Tenth Man, Chocolate Saiyan, Neil... Refracted Curvature, Arwin, and a whole bunch of people in Discord, so welcome one and all. Yo, yo! Good morning! Hello! Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A picture of Nathan there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I just seen that for the first time. Somebody They're very effeminate lips ago. then, Nathan. We've got yeah. a bit of lippy on there. We're going to have to stop commenting on the slideshow. That's like supposed to be in the background. I've obviously done too good a job of the slideshow. <laughs> Needs to be more subtle, perhaps, like this. Yeah, but they're good. Okie dokie. Uh, yeah, but they're meant to resemble you, Nathan. Meant, you know, so we can identify them as you. It looks a bit like Nathan should be called something like Norma. <laughs> it's a bit feminine. Oh, wow. No. I've, got, I've actually got from, uh, I think it was Poncho Pete that made it, um, a picture of me being interviewed by Vice and then the trans sexualization of me in other words a chick equivalent in the identical i'll dig it out and show it to you it's, it's hysterical <laughs> <laughs> but suggesting that i'm a chick <laughs> you're like okay i'm six foot two so i'm Nathan not a small not guy really a woman but you can think of him as a woman yeah unless you were in, in my actual company level. unless you were in my company then you definitely wouldn't be thinking of me as a woman hey adam <laughs> yeah i make an ugly woman myself I don't want to close my eyes. Right I didn't now. say that. I think you'll find I'd make I a beautiful what, woman. Have you seen Hori Sheet Show? When he's done that feminization of himself, he's bloody oh, good looking no. as a woman. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd Dude, be a total I've met minger. Nathan in person. I don't want to think of him as a woman. Thank you. For <laughs> <laughs> no, but in this topic, right, they don't have to work at the really is level, so we can think of him as a woman. It's totally okay. Look, Anna, if, Nathan was what a day is it? if Nathan was a chick, the show Just would be because you can doesn't mean you should. Oh, my God. Let him go. Go, Ted. Look, as a black Jewish Indian woman, I find this whole conversation highly problematic. Why are you rumpusing? Uh, yeah, stop rumpusing, Ted. I said if Nathan is a chick, the show would be very paltry. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I know a pun was coming? So the show is not very cultured, so therefore Nathan is not a chick, right? OK, can we stop flapping and do a bit of uh, housekeeping? <laughs> <laughs> flapping oh, that's funny any evidence that you can acquire an elevation angle from a curved baseline that's foul are you kidding me 
I like that they think that they can, though. It's like it's another one of those examples where you can't get a measured angle using like bendy lines, but you can think that you can. It just seems to be totally acceptable for them to violate the law of non-contradiction and completely flip it off when someone points it out to them and call us conspiratorial. It's but like, hold on. Do they really think that, or they just want that to be the case, but they never actually get to it? No, what they actually do is they argue with us for two straight years about how for every line is always bent. You wouldn't expect to see anything geometric because of standardised terrestrial atmospheric refraction based on R. Therefore, your hand's in front of your face, but it isn't really where you think it is because the light's all bending through sphere-shaped oxymoron air. That's what they've told us for two straight years. Then you come to the elevation angle argument and they box that argument with everything always bent, never a straight line to get into a nice package, put it on a shelf and then go, right, now let's use our straight lines to get some angles. You go, what about the uh, bent lines you told the spouse? And they go, no, 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 they're on a shelf somewhere else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, they, oh, when you ask them for a curved adjacent, they never say, no, you can't get it from a curved baseline. They always talk about how they'll use straight lines to get a straight baseline. We need to call it the ball earth paradox model, the ball earth model paradox, because they, when they're looking at boats and buildings, they've got a line of sight that they curve subject to seven over six R. But when they're looking at a star just above the horizon, that's a straight line because they don't want it to be a curve. They want it to be straight so they can do trigonometry on it and then make claims based on their model and how it can only be a ball because blah, blah, blah but completely miss the fact that the curve in the straight line when it suits and then the curve in the straight, uh, the, the, the keeping it straight when it suits. So the flipping between the two models is though we don't notice and we do notice and we say that violates the law of non-contradiction. You can't do that. An evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon bulge formerly known as Earth curve. It's only in the maths. That's they don't great. have it anymore, but they'll still bring it back up, like in nostalgia, when they declare boats going over the horizon. But don't actually ask them to describe how that works. Uh, well, they don't yeah, need to. Work. There's maths that they've laid down. We have fondly la labeled those mathematics the begging the question, proof of nothing, perspective hijacking, earth curve mathematics. So they don't need to claim it or deny it. We know what their primary claim is. They claim a geometric physical tangent point called Earth Curve blocking boats and buildings. Would they need an R for that? Yeah, they would, yeah. Any evidence of the R value, Earth radius? Was there somebody that wanted to add something from Discord? I had somebody off mute. No, mic vigilance, please. R value? Any evidence? You can't get you can't answer questions when you're being mic vigilant. Not you, Discord. Well, oh, thought you were bitching at me. No, it's, no, no. Man, it's geometrically it's illegal. derived. From illegal. Can you pop yourself on mute, or unless you wanted to add something? Hey. Um. Go on. What did you want to add? Sorry, Arwin. You're getting rumpused. No, he didn't. Go ahead, Arwin. My bad. Right. I just wanted to say that, yeah, you know, radius value, it's difficult, but they basically geometrically derive it from equator length. And that is, yeah, celestially derived. So it's kind of a, a little bit convoluted. I get it. Right. But that's really the only thing they even have to establish what the radius is supposed to be, let alone prove it. Right. Right. If you'll let me beg the question of, a, you know, the Earth being flat and measure it as such, then I can calculate the Earth as a sphere for you. Are you going to need a flat Earth for that? Yeah, yeah. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? I'm happy to report it's over there. It's over there for See, me what too. We'll do is, what we'll do, Nathan, is we'll look at the sun and we'll measure an angle from a flat baseline and the line of sight to the sun in question for the angle, we'll assume that that's a straight line too. We'll ignore that it bends over 7 over 6R because we need it to be straight for the purposes of trig. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll apply Euclidean geometry to then make a claim of how far away the sun is. 
and we'll completely ignore Einstein that says Earth's mass bends space-time, which curves all straight lines. And we'll just pretend that that doesn't apply because we're calculating trick because everything in the maths is always accurate, 100% always, and you can't disagree with the maths. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? Well, if you let me use a flat plane. Jules Fern? <laughs> or is that, John, if I let you use it, if, if you, you, you're trying to angle for some black market elevation angles off a flat plane, do you need those? Yes, yes. If you use, let me use the black market elevation angles off a flat plane to calculate it as a sphere, what's the problem with uh, just assuming that there's a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the center of it? Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? No, it's only assumptions. Right, any evidence you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon? Only if you accept gravity as an evidence. OK, any scientific evidence of gravity? No. Which what one? Hold on, it was Brian that said it. What, what am I accepting then? <laughs> what should I be accepting to explain gas pressure violating the second law of thermodynamics? Oh, well, no, I said only if you accept gravity as an evidence. And you asked, is there any scientific evidence of gravity? And the answer to that is no. <laughs> right. So it comes down well, to also, whether you accept but, it or not. Well, the, but the thing was, what I was kind of angling for is if I say gravity is not a force, end quote, George Musa, or... Gravity's not really a force at all, end quote, Professor Brian Cox. With that in mind, what, what is it they have to accept that holds gas pressure here about gravity? I don't follow. Well, I mean, it's only a, a case of whether you accept it or not. Uh, uh, there's no evidence for, for gravity. So it obviously couldn't, and there's no evidence that it could, even if it was real, that it could ever do any of the things they say. So, That's the bit I'm looking for. Even if it was real... Yeah. What would it be doing? So uh, let's just say for the sake of this discussion, okay, I 100% accept that there is in existence pseudo-Ramonian force space-time bending. It's not a force, and I've chosen, because I've got a free-thinking brain, to not think of it as a force when I've explicitly been told by people who are supposed to understand this stuff that it isn't one. So I'm not going to be thinking of it as a force because it isn't one. So, again, what do I have to accept? Uh, maybe you can branch into anti-flat Earth nonsense about gravity because this isn't a force well, that would hold gas here. Well, yeah, I mean, well, other than that, then, um, it seems as you accepted fourth dimension uh, space-time bending, um, that's not a force. So that can't do what they're claiming gravity does with, the, with their atmosphere. Um, I don't really have anything, to be honest with you. <laughs> OK. I do. I do. OK. <laughs> So, in, in terms of that natural, go <laughs> the, the nat go where the natural law violation known as outer space that's fake because gas would fill it and gravity is not a force to hold it here against a sphere in a vacuum. Yeah, but you, you, you accepted. Well, sorry, John. One second. Uh, you accepted the wrong gravity for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm just going on the current gravity, right? I mean, 107 year out of date, dusty old in name only Newtonian gravity that's not going to cut it I mean obviously the gas itself violates that definition of gravity that's out of date by 107 years was there someone in discord that wanted to say something not to say but I was going to say uh, you can think of gravity as a force if you accept it as a pseudo Romanian force space so what part of you that can okay, think of I will I will I accept that for the sake of this discussion, that there is a fourth dimension. Has anybody got a, what do you call that instrument? Is it a theramone? How do you say it? I accept that there's a fourth dimension. Theramin. Theramin. That's what we need over the top of me saying I accept that. Uh, yeah, okay. Fourth dimension, time, conceptual medium. But no, I accept that. Okay. Again, how does that answer the question once I've accepted that? Uh, John. Now think of gravity as a force within the third dimension. Doesn't mean it really is one, but we don't have to work at the really is level now. Okay, yeah, but, but it's uh, also not universal either, so... 
not universal. Okay. So if I'm trying to prove the existence yeah, of leprechauns... Yeah, as in... Go as in not everything goes down. Well, no, 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 but that's only in reference... We covered that because that's only in reference of the in-name only Newtonian gravitation that's 107 years out of date. No, gas does not go down, go boom, boom, but that violates the notion and concept out of date by 107 years that mass... What's that? Mass. Well, let's define that later. Attracts mass. It doesn't. Nathan? We can, we do, we must think of Newtonian gravity as a force. It doesn't really mean it is one. I think it means Einsteinian gravity. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I know what you have to do, Nathan, uh, I mean, to make this easier for you to, to get around, is uh, I'll explain to you. Uh, you see, Einsteinian gravity is not, it's not described as a force, uh, but it can be... It, it, it can behave as one. Would that make it any easier for you to... Behave? No, because what, the word... What's it's the it part? The yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> see? What's the it part that acts like a force? The effect. Oh, known as effect. Gravity. Hold on, isn't a so force a all... cause? Well, so... you can think of a force as a cause if you like. So I can think, uh, of, think of it that way. I can think of the force as a cause and think of it as a force when it's not a force. Hmm. This, this, this isn't getting us any closer to anything but, being physically shown, though, is it? You could think it behaves as a force. Can we stop or thinking about things, right? Because I'm not going to start giving examples of leprechauns and then telling you that they explicitly don't exist, but we can think of them existing. Whilst we're on so this that... subject of, of leprechauns, guys, can no, I just, can. just say... Happy St. Patrick's Day to buy. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> yeah, bro. Do you care? In seriousness, do you care about that, Brian? Me? No, yeah. not even remotely. St. Patrick I, was I Italian. About, I, I suspect about not. Adam. I care about Adam saying it to me, though. That I care about. St. Patrick's Day, I don't. It's for normies to get dressed up in green and get shit-faced on Guinness. That's, that's all it is. Yeah, but the Irish don't need an excuse to I, drink. I, I, and, and the problem uh, with that is... I don't even drink, so the problem for me is I don't see any appeal in any of that. It's a good day if you're not in Ireland. It's a good day if you're overseas in, let's say, London, Sydney, New York, somewhere like that. It's Philadelphia or somewhere. It's a good day then, but here, here it's here. It, it, there is a Thursday. Kind of, yeah. It's kind of, yeah. They try and make it out to be a bit special Thursday, but it's it's not not real. What about Northern Ireland? <laughs> Uh, let's get, let's get West Belfast and that would, would celebrate. They don't know about, obviously, East Belfast and that. I got invited to uh, St. Patrick's Day event tomorrow when I arrived in Idaho. I paid 75 bucks for it. They got everything. Guinness, all the meals, everything. All I got is corned beef and cabbage tonight with some potatoes. That's my That's uh, going to get an end to this conversation drawn immediately. Thank you very much, Neil. So... That's how it's And any evidence of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Well, just before we move off, I just want to wrap up that last point on gravity. Okay. Most people on our side don't realise that because 99% of people in state education were not told that Newton, Newtonian gravitation was replaced by Einstein, because they weren't told that, they leave high school thinking that they know all about gravity, right? But when you actually talk to them and ask them, what is gravity?, They'll give you the Newtonian concept. They'll tell you all about how mass attracts mass, but they'll not tell you that it was replaced in 1915. Well, if they weren't told that themselves by their trusted teacher, Conspiracy Cats, for example, then they're not going to know that what we're telling them is the current position. So that's the reason why everybody thinks gravity is a force. It's because none of them were taught it in school that it's not a force. Imagine what would be the position if everybody was taught that gravity is not a force and it was all Einsteinian instead. It would be a very colourful education that we would all start asking naturally progressive questions about why do things go down, why do things go up? But because none of them were told that, they just get brainwashed into thinking that everything falls down because of gravity, anything that falls up is because of buoyancy, and here's the math that, that proves it. And that's literally the brainwashing indoctrination known as state education. That's where the problem starts. Shout out to the 100 people watching. woo hoo hoo Thank you very much if you smash the share button. That's the only reason we've got 100 people watching. If you've just joined the stream, a very warm welcome to you. Please share the show. I just want to say on the axial rotation, 
uh, St. Patrick's Day worldwide. This is where most people sense axial rotation well into the night, and it's in the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> that doesn't answer my question. Why weren't they taught that, Anthony? Because teachers get taught the truth, students get taught the lie, and teachers knowingly tell students the lie because they get paid. They get paid to lie to children. That is the reason why. Is that the reason is you were given, though? Hold on, hold on. I just want to clarify that with Anthony. Was that the actual excuse you were given, though? That's the, the whys and wherefores as you see it and as it actually is. But the reason why they're taught 107 years out of date, that wasn't the reason you were given, was it? It's because the reason they're taught that is because it's in the national curriculum. And they get paid to teach the national curriculum regardless of its truth. Right. Compartmentalisation is the answer. So if you ask somebody who's a higher up, who's not teaching it or doesn't need to understand it, they'll tell you that it's part of the curriculum. Compartmentalisation is the word. Indeed. Well, asking the teacher. That's not the reason. Just one sec, Brian. Going to school. you gotta, you got to throw out more than... Cool, right? It, it's simple. You you go and you ask the teachers about the curriculum, and all they're doing is repeating what they were told to teach you just so they can get a paycheck. They're not trying to question anything. Yeah, that's what I said, and Brian doesn't agree. Come on, Brian, what was your disagreement? Yeah, uh, my disagreement with her. I don't disagree with what you're saying. It's that that's not the reason. That's not the reason why they te teach the majority of the Western world, the gravity is a force. It's because in 1960... Yeah. That's oh, like a disagreement. Just one uh, second. Yeah. Hold let, on. me, let me finish. Go on, Brian. Uh, yeah, thank you, Nathan. In 1969, they showed gravity as a force right, happening to astronauts who are walking on the moon. And that's why they have to continue teaching people that gravity is a force, because if it's not a force, then what the hell was going on with those astronauts? Well, that's, a, did, obviously. that's a good one, Brian. That, nah, that, that moon landing is essentially Narnia. That is literally the equivalent yeah. of Narnia in adult language. See, that's the thing that potentially is the biggest roadblock, right? You've got the US government lying through their back teeth back in the 60s and 70s. And were this to come to the forefront of the masses, that would presumably we always joke about how you know if anti-flat earthers were to turn they wouldn't suddenly become enlightened they're just pitchforks and torches over to nasa that start blaming people well rightly so in a lot of instances but especially when it comes to the moon landing you know that is just narnia you know when people turn up the contrast and show the backdrops you're like yeah it's literally on a stage it's embarrassingly poor quality now we've got modern tech so what they're just going to admit to that? No, no, no. They'll prop up that rhetoric for as long as humanly possible until presumably anybody who is perpetrating it's dead. Then they might just about let it out, but it'll be highly embarrassing. Sad thing is so many people still believe that. I mean, a lot of people. Okay, so for the audience, there might be some newbies out there that need this disseminating in a way that's nice and easy to understand. We breathe gas pressure, and according to the heliocentric sphere Earth model of us globe earth with a 250,000 mile away moon for easy numbers you've got a journey that has to take place through the vacuum of space now that area the vacuum of space isn't real the moon's real you can see it with your own eyes but traveling to it as a presupposed rock with the journey taking place through a vacuum is a violation of natural law if the sky was a vacuum as it would need to be to travel to the moon, then the gas we're breathing would violate the second law of thermodynamics by staying here. It wouldn't. It would expand in all directions, because that's exactly what gas does, to fill the availability of volume it has to fill. And the availability of volume to fill would be the sky vacuum, a massive space for gas to fill. So that's what gas would do. Further to that, we'd never have developed gas pressure in the first place. As soon as a gas particle came out of the ground in a heliocentric model, it would just fly off into space and never come back again. So you'd never develop gas pressure. So their entire notion of a journey to a rock called the moon is absolutely ludicrous because it involves travel through a second law of thermodynamics violation fake place called space. But there is a good question that you can ask the ball earthers on this, and it's really good to get them to contrast what the position would be if we didn't live inside a container where there was a localised heat source 
that warms up the water, causes evaporation, causes the increase of gas at ground level. If we did live inside a container and there was an abundance of gas being created at ground level, how would it be different to the way we see our real world? And I was about to say, that is, that, that is exactly how we see the real world. So you're kind of asking a non exactly. question. Yeah, but well, when you try to get them to contrast rather than compare, they can't do it. Well, because when they describe their sky vacuum, you essentially have to violate the natural laws that we understand dictate the way things behave. So suddenly, gas doesn't behave the way it behaves because there's a sky vacuum. It's like, well, no, there's no reason why gas would stop behaving the way it behaves. It's not going to stop expanding in all directions just because you've got a fundy religious belief that there's a sky vacuum because men have been on the moon on telly. Yeah, well, they get around um, that by saying natural law don't exist. It's made up by man. Yeah, that's what anti-flat earthers tell us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to retain your fundamentalist religious belief in a sphere, then you can deny the laws of nature to do so. You can do that. Well, I think we would question for the ballers because that, that point I made about the moon landings, I brought that up in the past, but it didn't seem to get the, the uh, notice it got today. Um, <clears throat> question for the ball, our course, not like our opposition, I'm talking about in general, right? You know, any PhD. Is what is shown in the moon landings, is that, uh, is it the word commensurate? Is that the word I'm looking for? Which, Correct me on that, my word error in a minute. With uh, Einsteinian uh, four, uh, sorry, four dimension time space bending, is that commensurate with that? Does that line up with what Einstein states is the situation in outer well, space in their model? Well, that's the trick, and I, it's also the response to Anthony uh, when he said compartmentalization. The reason it's taught the way it is is because nobody really understands it. Look at Neil deGrasse Tyson when he says he has no idea what it is. They don't understand it themselves. Yeah, but that's the thing about it. Like, uh, that's the question, though. It's like, is what, we're, what we were shown in the moon landings? Because when we ask for evidence of a force of gravity, no one points to the moon landings. Do you know what I mean? And now, well, I understand why our opposition in this arena don't point to it too much. But other people don't point to the moon landings. They say, think, go down. That's all they well, say. Well, but speaking of gravity... Oh, I'm sorry, Brian, I thought you were done. I just want to say, yeah, just, just the, the, the question of, is what we we saw in these supposed moon landings, does that line up with what Einstein said we should see? Well, my, the, the, answer, relativity? the answer is that there's nobody on that understands it, right? because it is so nonsensical. But they want to assert that they do, but they don't understand it enough to articulate it to you, and then you get the projection of, well, you can just treat it as a force. But, John, they're saying it I... keeps us on the ground, John. They're saying that's what keeps me grounded. Otherwise, I'd float away. Yeah, that's what that's what they tell the kids, right? Right. And you, guys remember that video? Nice and... you guys remember that video where... They had like some astrophysicist who was talking about the levels in which they teach gravity. So they taught you know, they they had like a like a little kid and then one older and then you know high school, then college, and then a professor. And it, it started as a force when you're teaching it to a little kid, but then when you get to the professor, all of a sudden now they're talking about space time. You guys remember that video? I don't. I want to see it, though. Well, I, I don't remember that video, but I certainly remember uh, a very, very pertinent member of our debating team by the name of Adam Meekin detailing his experience of precisely that. Yep. Right, but nobody understands it, right? The, there's just people that claim they do, and they claim they're an authority over it. But even when you corner those people like Neil deGrasse Tyson and ask him, well, what's the response he gave that reporter when she asked him what gravity was? I don't know. Next no question. Idea. Next question. Okay, so let me ask you a question, just in case newbies are listening right now, which we hope they are. Why are we grounded, if not gravity? When you say we, we're not. So I nearly interjected earlier, but you're on a good roll between the, the three of you. 
Well, you say gravity's taught to us as the thing that keeps us on the ground. Oh, yeah. Releases helium balloon, opens a bottle of pop, and goes, oh, and what's happening to that gas? Is it staying on the ground because of gravity? No, no, gas isn't going down, go boom, boom. Yeah, like, so releases helium balloon. Well, the other one is jumps in a swimming pool, and then all of a sudden you're not going down anymore. Jumps in a vat of mercury, and if you could survive the poisoning, you definitely wouldn't be, you'd be being pushed against the surface. So it, it, it's all to do with the medium relative to the thing in question, and they always forget that. So what the, the, the change in the perspective of the acceleration from the, the medium and the object in it to a magical woo-woo force, and if it goes the opposite way, they just call it buoyancy and calculate it as so. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? I wanted to weigh in. No, no, go ahead. You don't have to worry. If I've moved on in the housekeeping questions, you can always backtrack. That was a good pun. <laughs> but no, there, there's no <laughs> Oh, weigh that. in. Oh, you bastards. Get lost. Get that one. All, all right, all right, all right. So, okay. So, I mean, because... Uh, when we talk about gravity and we talk about the air, we never talk about like uh, the the vectors that the Earth is moving through space, hypothetically or theoretically speaking, right? So I was talking to somebody and when, you know, obviously they say, well, the, the air is Velcro to the Earth and so, you know, they, they've calculated the, the spin or the centripetal force or whatever all of that stuff is. And I'm like, yeah, but what about the direction that the Earth is literally moving through space with the sun? 66,000 miles an hour, it's a claim. And no, well, the sun is moving uh, 440 something thousand. Correct. So you've got uh, 400, no, 400, miles, 400 and something like, thousand miles an hour is the sun's projected claimed speed around the great attractor right in the milky way yeah so i, I just take that number and it's like it, and then the guy literally said yeah we just ignore that exactly but you would have to account for the, you can't you can't say the gas is just going to stick to something moving like that no i'm wrong I, I, that's actually incorrect so the speed you gave was the speed of the rotation of the milky way itself <laughs> as a galaxy and then beyond that, you've got that galaxy along with a whole load of others moving around the Great Attractor at a couple of million miles an hour. I don't know the exact number, but there's three levels. So you've got your um, normal Earth rotation. Then you've got your sun around the, um, uh, what's it called, the galaxy at 66,000 miles an hour. Then you've got the speed that you described of the galaxy itself. Okay. And then you've got the whole lot moving around the Great Attractor. And don't forget that you're going to have uh, elliptical orbits, too, so you're going to have changes in speed within those uh, huge numbers. Great. So this is something that I always ascribe to YouTube because he used to call us shills. I think he was joking, but back in the day, because we didn't used to bring it up, and he used to like arguing about it, so obviously it's the most important argument ever. But in the heliocentric model, you've got basically a waltzer, that's essentially what it is. So if you've ever been on a waltzer, when your direction changes, you feel a massive force. Well, in the heliocentric model, we've got a whole bunch of different directions going on all at once. And that does induce speed changes. Obviously, we would notice with these ridiculously high speeds, it's absolutely absurd. But there you go. It's just another thing that we don't notice. So I don't necessarily like it as an argument. We would notice this if we beg the question of a heliocentric model. Yeah, that's not at my alley. See, Nathan, you've just misrepresented the argument of scale because the waltzer is the size of the universe. And although the speeds seem high from our scale and perspective, relative to the actual size of the universe, they're incredibly slow, Nathan. You it's the other way around. Oh, God. Yeah. If you scale up a clock, right, so the edge of the hand, the rim velocity, right... Let's say you extend that hand out to 100 metres. Will the rim velocity be faster or slower, Anthony? It doesn't the... matter if I tell people that you can't scale. I'm scaling it up. Do you think the edge velocity goes down as you scale up? Is that what you think? 
No, I'm just telling people that you can't scale, and that's what they'll be Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Make. When I refute your claim that's absolutely ass about face backwards and point out how it would be backwards with an example of how it would increase in its rim velocity, you just tell me I don't understand scale. I get it. it exactly, and now I've just become an anti-flat earther. Perfect. Nathan, if you place a set inside an airplane, you don't feel the motion. Yeah, I do. Globe, globe proven. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, how many planes have you been on? Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Of course you do. Yeah, it's all nonsense. I mean, I don't know how many times I corrected ballers on that when they start with this. It's just one fluid motion. I said, no, your globe out is changing its rate minute to minute. It's either speeding up or slowing down, as it has to, to go to make this elliptical orbit around your heliocentric sun. That, I used to, well, we don't have to talk about that these days, but that was something you had to argue. Well, if we get an answer to the any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology or astrophysics, that'll round out the housekeeping. Is there any valid hypotheses? No, there can't be. There is plenty of effects, plenty of phenomenon, but they, they can't produce a valid hypothesis. So it's impossible. Perfect. Almost 150 people watching as we round out the housekeeping questions. Excellent. Thank you, all of the people who smashed the share button. Please share the show if you haven't done so already. I got so much material to trim out of yesterday's show. Disappointingly, very little of it will be from Akuma virus. Yeah, that was that was embarrassing uh, of the show from him. Like, And the fact that it was Zanuck feeding him. Okay. I kind of wish it had just been Zanuck from the beginning. Indeed, but he'd it have was, had to... It was Zanuck. It was Zanuck from the beginning if he was feeding him. No, no, because it, you're getting the interpretation through Akuma virus of what Zanuck is telling him to say. So you're not getting the information as it's being proposed. Uh, That's got, not my problem. We've got the organ grinder eventually. I'll just play a quick clip. This has been released as a short video on YouTube. So if you want to check it out, the title is The Globe Model Required a Flat Earth Measurement First. Shorts. Welcome to Flat Earth, Sonic. You don't need the Dingleberry Earth dangling beneath the flat plane we establish as the horizontal baseline to acquire elevation angles. No, you don't get the sphere till later till you calculate that. Later? Well, after you've used <laughs> Flat Earth to get an angle. But you're saying the sphere bit comes after the Flat Earth bit. Yeah, your sphere assumption comes after you've measured a flat plane. You've got to be measuring the flat plane first to get to the sphere bit. You know, your sphere relies on Earth being a flat plane. So, yeah, you're right. The sphere bit comes later, after the flat plane bit, doesn't it, Zanik? Yes, it does. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Welcome to flat Earth. You won't get to a sphere bit unless you measure the flat Earth first. Then your belief in a sphere can follow after you've measured a flat Earth elevation angle measurement from a flat plane that you're standing on. Then... And only then can you progress in your fundamentalist religious sphere belief. Well yeah, you're going to need a flat plane. Your f globe models were derived from flat planes. <laughs> no. I love that. The, the sphere comes later. Yeah, that's, we've been saying this for about six weeks. Yeah. The sphere bit is going to come after you measure a flat plane. So when you say to us, you're begging the question, no, we understand that this geometric principle requires a flat baseline. That's just a geometric principle, and it's employed with celestial navigation. When you tell us that you're going to... How, how do they phrase it? They say something like, we're going to acquire a flat baseline, or we're going to... What's the word that they use? Establish. Okay. Establish. Okay. <laughs> we're going to establish... A nice flat baseline on our globe. You're like, number one, you don't have any flat baselines on a globe. That's the principle of a globe. Number two, why in unholy hell are you establishing, that would be you begging the question and making an assumption that despite your fundy belief that the ground's actually curving, you will, quote, establish a horizontal. Now, you don't need to do that. Just prove you're on a sphere. Do it from the spherical surface that we haven't got. No, they don't do it that way, though. Celestial navigation absolutely utilises a flat Earth. So, to get around that, they must first establish a flat Earth to start measuring some angles. Now, those angles wouldn't work 
if that established flat baseline both us and the globe must use was actually in relation to a curve. They wouldn't work. They do. And there's no translation to a sphere needed. What's that? You can do it after. Well, after you've got all your flat Earth measurements. Every time we were asked in the last seven years to prove what's your measurement of a flat Earth. Well, elevation angle measurement is a flat Earth measurement. And it's very useful for less celestial navigation, isn't it, fundies? So what are you going to do about it? You're going to tell us how that's wrong, celestial navigation? No. You're going to reposition it like we're wrong when we're not actually claiming or doing celestial navigation. We're just pointing out it uses a flat Earth. No, you won't, won't get around that. We'll just ask you why you're arguing against the very principles of celestial navigation, which use a flat Earth. So what's your third option? Slap a flat Earth on top of a sphere. That's what they're doing. That's what their rhetoric has told them they've got to do. First step, establish Earth as flat. Second step, measure angles off that flat baseline that is the ground you're standing on. Third step, move around based on your fix that you got from triangulation. Well, does any of that involve curved surfaces? Absolutely not. Not at any stage whatsoever do you need or do you utilise a curved surface. And if you did, you couldn't do any of this. So they're absolutely screwed and are now begging us for a flat earth to establish so they can do a few measurements and then assume a sphere after they've done it all on a flat earth. It's absolutely brilliant. Their response to the, what you've said there, Nathan, what they'll do is they'll say, they'll try and twist it around and state they'll make videos or they'll make claims that, and in a joking way, uh, kind of a put down fashion, that Nathan Oakley doesn't understand how you establish a horizontal on a sphere. Or Nathan Oakley doesn't know what a tangent plane is. Nathan doesn't understand how we've got to be using the same flat plane he's using, and we're going to establish that by way of using a word like tangent, followed by the actual useful bit of our assumption when we're a glober with a curved earth we haven't actually got to utilise to get these angles. I'll tell Nathan he just doesn't understand. Yeah, that'll work. And then what'll happen? When you rebut that, they'll then say, Nathan doesn't even think the Earth's flat. He just thinks it's not a ball and he's not a real, he's not, he's a fake flat earther. And they'll just do anything to take you away from, they'll always have a rebuttal, but the rebuttal will never address the science. It'll always address the person. It'll always address the nonsense, the woo woo, the, the, the nonsense that they want to distract away from rather than presenting the evidence that proves that their claim is correct. That's what they'll always do. Meanwhile, elevation angle measurements prove Earth is flat. They can only and are only done on a flat plane. And if you're a baller, you must first, quote, establish a flat plane in order to measure them. Now, your fundamentalist religious ball belief can come later. But in terms of the measurements you're going to be doing, they will be done on a flat plane. You'll have to and must assume it. Now, your assumption is an assumption that we don't have to make when we are on a flat plane and we just measure an angle. We, the flat earthers, if we were using celestial navigation... That's the method that is using a flat plane. We'd just measure an angle precisely as described in all of the manuals. Yeah, none of them are going to describe anything to do with a sphere because it wouldn't give you an angle. So there's no assumptions required on our part when we just measure an angle. For you, you've got to assume a flat plane, haven't you? It's epic. See, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. I don't know if you were listening. I think we're starting the show. But... There was some, that I, a virus said something like that, very similar to that yesterday. He said, um, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, well, it's just because I assume a flat plane, you think it's flat? And that's logical to you? Like, that's paraphrasing, but that's that's kind of, that's how we meant it, right? Like, you guys are crazy. What, I, just because I assume it's flat, you think it's flat? So, wait. to me, I'm like, wait a minute, how does that make any sense? So, if we were sitting here saying, of course it's flat because we assume it's a ball first, w would that be logical to you guys? They do the exact same thing. They assume that it's a ball first and then think it is a ball because they make that assumption. Yet when we say, hang on a second, you, you're measuring an angle and it has to be from a flat plane, be it a, a flat plane that you imagine in your head or a flat plane that you measure with a level, that flat plane is where you get your angle from. And when he says that you're assuming flat first, he doesn't see the contradiction that he holds, which is that he assumes that it's a ball first and then thinks that it's a ball. Well, when he says, you're assuming it's flat first, we say, well, we're just measuring an angle. 
but they just don't like the inference that comes from that. That's the problem. Well, we're not. It's, it, that, that, that's a, that's a total straw man because we're not assuming that it's flat. That's what we experience in reality, and that's, and that's how we're measuring it. Well, just just for definition definition's sake, right? Uh, a debate is when you have a point of contention that to be argued. What is the point of contention now? I'll give you one from chat if you like. Not the point of contention. Yeah. Okay, just give me a second. Talk about sales. This is going to take me longer than I expected. Well, what I'm saying though is, if they have to utilize a flat plane to get the angle measurements, then there's there's no contentious point. Okay. What, what Blue Marble Science Agreed. says. Uh -uh. Blue Marble Science says, "Quote: You're not doing celestial navigation because you can't. You can do it." without you i think he means oh god this is so terribly written i don't want to use this one because it means i'll have to paraphrase what he said okay let's find another one i think he meant to say you yeah, can't it's, it's that bad <laughs> you can't speak english or, or what it's just as terrible. I'll read out verbatim if you want. Quote, you're not doing celestial navigation because you can't. I think that's an exclamation mark. You can do it without spherical trig. Prove me wrong. You can do it without spherical trig. Yeah, it doesn't use spherical trig. It uses planar trig. So we agree, Blue Marvel Science. Terrible example for me to pick on you. Welcome to Flat Earth. That's right. You can do it without spherical trig, and they do do it without spherical trig. It uses planar trig. What is he, he, meant to say, he, he meant to say you can't do it without spherical trig, but he was so angry when he was writing it, he didn't write it correctly. No, <laughs> hold on. Why you do, uh, I, 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 I almost did that, right, didn't I? And then I stopped and then just read out what he said verbatim, didn't I? So you can assume that Blue Marble wants to fight for a spherical trig that is most definitely not used in celestial navigation. Therefore, it's a typo, and he meant to say, you can't do it without spherical trig. But that is not what he said. He said, you can do it without spherical trig. Moreover, you do do it without spherical trig. So he's correct. But I'd rather just welcome him to Flat Earth than say, no, you should be arguing that you can't do it without spherical trig. It's a typo. No, let's not make that assumption. Just welcome him to Flat Earth. We understand that we can, we don't do it with spherical trig. It's using planar trig, Flat Earth trig. That's a fact. Unless he wants to argue against celestial navigation and we assume he's got a typo. Um, excuse me. That, the point of contention, though, where, where is it? Where do we ar argue with that? Well, the, well, I haven't given you an example. I thought he was saying you can't do it without spherical trig, but I misread it. And in fact, he was just you know joining us in his understanding that it's done with Flat Earth trig. So there is no. Well, he, well, well thanks, bro. Is, just want to say, this is the guy who claimed to prove gas pressure without a container using three containers. <laughs> so let's not hold out a whole lot of hope for anything he writes. Well, I'm just saying that for a debate to exist, there has to be a point of contention. And I'm yet to see the, their point of contention. It, it seems to be delusional fantasies, but. No, well, as of now, there is no contention until after the fact. Yeah. How, how are we starting? Measuring a flat plane? <laughs> okay, we're all good here. Now, yeah. what you do and go forth to do after that, we don't care. <laughs> yeah. You're going to need a flat plane, and you're going to need a flat plane, and you're going to need a flat plane, and you're going to need a flat plane. We're all going to use a flat plane. And their only mild attempt to get around that is to try and whistle past the graveyard and start talking about, well, what are we going to do once we've got this angle? Well, we're going to start extrapolating out, extrapolating out distances along the ground. Oh, right, so we've moved past the measurement that's done on a flat plane, and we're now going to talk about and argue about what you can do thereafter and weasel in somehow it's related to your sphere that definitely wasn't the starting point of this measurement. But you've got the measurement now. So afterwards, you can start assuming spheres are involved somehow when they'd fuck up everything if you were measuring an angle off a curved baseline. Excuse my French. Yeah, I mean, what, what, it, just, my just, point is, it, is this is no longer a debatable it, subject. It doesn't seem like. No, we've won. 
Yeah. Earth is flat. With what? They're, they're just arguing now. They're not debating. They're arguing uh, emotionally about their belief. Exactly. It's become their belief. That's precisely sure. the scenario that we're now faced with. They now have a belief, an unjustifiable, untenable belief. But they will exercise that belief after they've taken flat Earth angle measurements. So we win. This process requires a flat Earth. Lives would be lost if it wasn't done this way. How is it done with a flat Earth? End of argument. What's that? No, it doesn't use a flat Earth. So what are you going to do, Glober? Well, first I'll establish a flat plane. So it will be done with a flat Earth then. Yeah, but afterwards I'll assume it's a sphere after I've measured that flat plane that we've got. Well, if it, from the boat, from the observer on the boat, he, has, he or she establishes 390 degrees below the boat and th th that position below, uh, underwater below the boat goes to three ge geographical positions of three celestial bodies. And they could be hundreds or thousands of miles away in a straight line. And that's only the radius of three circles. They are only the radio of three circles of equal, ad equal altitude. The diameter of those circles of equal altitude and every part within those circles of equal altitude will all be flat. So what they do is they then take the coordinates of those three GPs and they mat mathematicalize it back onto their globe. And that's all they're doing. Mathematicalize, I like that. <coughs> yeah, once, that means, once you've established that, that the sextant is measuring angles of distances up to 5,000 miles, it's using an, it's an angle measuring tool. Once, that's, once you've accepted that and you're doing it on the sea, I mean, the, the, the debate's over. Isn't it really? Yes, that's what QE says. They can't even accept the existence of a sextant. Here's a ship measuring an angle on a flat plane. If this line along the bottom was curved, then you couldn't measure this angle. It's just that simple. This is done on a flat plane. What's it yeah, called? For, for them, home. it's called the equatorial plane. If they're going to conflate a measurement on the surface to where it actually works and is accurate which is the centre of their globe earth in reality a sphere of the heavens around an equatorial flat plane in the centre of a sphere earth well that's just a flat plane I was going to say equatorial what again say that word again equatorial plane plane that, that, for, for a bunch of people who think we live on a sphere that word comes up a lot <laughs> it's, it's a little weird well, that and uh, the, I, I wouldn't say that they use mathematics to turn it into a sphere. They violate the geometric principles that they use to acquire the measurement to turn it into a sphere. But that's not using math. That's incorrectly using math. Correct. For example, Al Biruni gets to the mountain and decides that he'd use planar trig to derive the height of the mountain with two angle measurements as he moves forward or moves back, depending on the story towards the mountain. So he can then extrapolate from his flat plane with triangles how high the mountain is. So he's got a flat plane. That's how he got his angles. Then he goes up the mountain and finds a militarised black swan waiting for him. But he's measured a flat plane before he's done anything. Sexton cannot work off of a curved baseline, period. It has never worked off of a curved baseline. If there's no contention then, John, where do they go from here then, the ballers? Because obviously they can't come in and argue the toss like Zanuck found out. What you're going to concede is the first step being in a flat plane required to get any of these angles. And trying to whistle past the graveyard here is not going to work. We just keep bringing you back to the fact that you're now going to utilise the flat earth angles you've got to imply some sphericity to the ground when, as John's just pointed out, that would violate the very geometric principle that you're using with your measurements that you're inferring a sphere from. They were taken from a flat earth. So where do we go? Where do they go? Me, I'm just sitting pretty while everyone in the Western world thinks they're on a sphere. Uh, well, there's two directions. They can accept the measurement that they've taken as reality, 
or they can wander off further into delusion. And it seems like a lot of them want to wander off into delusion. Well, I think Who Sanic cares said, about the delusional ones? The, the ones that actually take these measurements in reality and actually get places <laughs> because they take these measurements and they can know where they are, those are the people that maybe these delusional guys should go argue with. Their argument's not with us. Right on. The argument that the anti-flat earthers currently have is not with us. It's with this horrible, evil process of celestial navigation that requires a flat earth. They want to argue with that. Well, they not really, though. Oh, no, 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 it's not true. Because they don't want to argue with that. They just want us to stop reminding that it uses flat plane geometry. That's all. Right? They don't mind us using a flat plane. Just stop calling it flat. Based on the snippet from Zanuck, their next play, if he's the lead, is to admit that it works on the flat plane only and they get the angle measurements from a flat plane, but then after they get it from a flat plane, they got to now change it for their beloved globe. So they've conceded. Yeah, and then wander off into delusion. Yeah, then wander off into, well, after we concede and accept, as is required, that we measure this angle from a flat baseline, thereafter I'm going to go into the delusions of sphere Earth and tell you how my flat angle actually is going to be a curved baseline even though I just measured it flat. Well, that's delusion. I think a lot of them genuinely are on the way to the nuthouse as a direct re a consequence of this. They can't maintain that position and maintain sanity because it's so glaringly contradictory when they are telling us about their flat measurement that they make when they assume the ground's flat to do it and then they measure it flat. But then what? Tell well, us that it's not in relation to the ground and somehow think that that's an excuse? You telling us that, what, the ground you've just measured with GPs on the ground isn't the curved earth you think it is? Because you haven't assumed that bit yet. You've just measured the flat earth. So we're not going to be telling you that that's the ground until we've taken a few more steps to assume the ground it wasn't in relation to is now the curved surface that we weren't measuring. Well, they're not really on the way to the nut house, though. You'd be surprised because people have been like that, like anti-flat earthers, for centuries, centuries and they grow old, right? Why? Because they just nag. They don't actually like get into violent situations or anything. They're not insane in that way. They're just mentally deranged, but not violent. So yeah, nut cases, anti-flat earth or nut cases can come a long way if they manage Allah. not to nag somebody to basically assault them at some point. If they can no, avoid no, it, they'll, we'll they'll survive. Th this situation is unique. Right. There wasn't the group of people with the arguments they have before in history. There was people with arguments, but they didn't have the arguments we have, and they didn't have the internet. <clears throat> That's all yes, right. You don't know that. Yes, Brian. Ah, yeah, but it was he doesn't know that. Ah, they had it all got in a memory there. hole. How do you know that they didn't have that information? How do you know that last time and the time before and the time before Neo didn't get to the source? You don't know that. We do because we have really pigeons. Do. Well, I can only go on the books from people like uh, Samuel Robotham and whatever else. I've got one more clip. Hold mm -hmm. on. I, I got to stop the Matrix argument. That's that's not going to fly because that's denying that you can know anything. And that, but you made a claim of knowing within the statement of saying you can't know. So the Matrix is contradictory. It can't be Either that. way, we're going to get a clip. Would it be possible to switch it up and use the spherical surface first? <laughs> or do we need the sure. flat? We can you still use the, the flat surface. Okay, you say we can use the spherical surface surf first. How'd you get an elevation angle from the spherical surface first? No, you wouldn't. You'd need a flat surface. Sorry, you wouldn't. That's <laughs> right. Now enjoy the slapping sound of a flat earth. That's absolutely correct. You wouldn't get an elevation angle from a curved earth. It needs to be flat first. And with that, I'm going to say, first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's live show possible. If you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Primary Streams, however, stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. 
Unfortunately, if you are watching this live, this is where we bid you farewell. So a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who smashed the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, joined as an Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and all that good stuff. I think there actually was a super chat that I didn't read out. Should I go back and read that out? Let's just go back one second. I think there was a, a Retro Bill Super Chat that I missed, so let's just go back up and read that. Shout out to Retro Bill for hitting the Super Chat. He says, somewhere in an alternate universe, we're the Weasley ones assuming a flat plane and using math to flatten an obvious and observably round sphere. <laughs> Cue the music. Yeah, thank you very much indeed for the Super Chat. Uh, retro bill i really appreciate it once again stay tuned if you're watching on either primary stream i've been nathan oakley and i will see you all in the next video Cynthia O'Hara, who says, were those nut slaps in the clip? Yes, they were. Yes, indeed they were. Middle of your sentence interrupted the beginning of his, so, yeah. No, it didn't. The fuck? I, I, I have a prediction <laughs> now when it's finished. Are you finished when you say it again now? I just wanted to say that we're all seeing the nuttiness in the people right now from the anti-flat earthers, right? But that nuttiness has been programmed in there in various fields and various ways for a long time, for centuries, I think. Pretty much since schooling started to become standardized and obligated, right? That's where this sort of programming snuck in. It's just that before the internet age, it never really came out. But I bet there's been some really nutty anti-flat earther grandpas among us that we just never figured out how bad they were. Yeah, that can get behind. Right? Yeah, so that sort of intertwines with what Brian's saying and doesn't need a Matrix example to, to get behind it. Um, yeah, in other words, there wasn't the means in terms of what did they have? Postal service, telephone. If you go back to the last wave, well, that doesn't have any lasting impression. You know, flyers that might have gone out are all long got long lost. Any billboards that might have gone up are all long taken down. So, you know, if you're the writer of history, you just don't write that bit. Doesn't right. mean it didn't we happen. Probably the memories we have of that is, yeah, uh, remember that time Grandpa got into a fight with the local there because of a philosophical argument, right? That's probably how that happened back in, in the day. And people wouldn't even know what they would be discussing. Right. Yeah. I, I'd like. I'd like to make. Sorry. Go on, chocolate. No, you're good. I was agreeing with Arwen. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, I, I, there was a prediction I wanted to make, but on the live show, but it, it finished unfortunately. Uh, my prediction for the future, uh, in close future, is that where they're going to go to next is they're going to use the geometric uh, horizon fallacy. That's what I'm calling it, because what they're going to say, right? is they're going to say, of course, we pre-assume it's flat to get the angles, right? And then they're going to laugh as if we didn't understand that. You know, it's like, of course, you can't see the geometric horizon, you idiots. <laughs> of course. Uh, hold on, Brian, flat. what you're saying is, that's, that's bullshitsu, my friend. Yeah, but that's what they're, that's where they're going to. That's the only place they have to go. To. Of course, we don't see Earth curve. Nobody's claiming the horizon's Earth curve. Yeah, that's bull jitsu. Yeah, of course yeah, we that... measure it flat. Don't you understand that we measure it flat? Like, yeah, that's not a rebuttal. That's a concession. Nobody claimed the horizon was geometric. Another concession. Yeah, they do. Their earth curve is a begging the question proof of nothing. Perspective hijacking earth curve calculator claim that puts earth curve at the horizon. <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, of course, we've debunked that. So the anti-flat earther approach is bull jitsu. 
Nobody's claiming Earth curves the horizon. Yeah, you are. We just debunked it. Definition of things are meaningless. But the attempt is going to be to put the onus on us as if we didn't understand that they, of, that of course they have to pre-assume it's flat to measure an angle. And they're all going to snigger then as if we were so stupid not to understand that. Yeah, but if you're, That's going again, to be I, I understand how they think phrasing it in that way would frustrate a flat earther. So an anti-flat earther is going to phrase it, well, of course you measure it flat, Dumbo. <laughs> they don't get it how we measure it flat because it's a globe. Yeah, I get that. And, yeah, you might find that frustrates some flat earthers. But if you were listening to that as a newbie, what would you take away from it? The anti-flat earther, let's call it globe earther in the mind of a normie, the globe believers saying, yeah, of course we measure it flat. <laughs> you think that's going to be a really wonderful way of convincing people that they're on a sphere and that we measure spherical surfaces beneath our feet when they're telling you overtly that it's flat and they have to measure it that way? I, I, don't, know, I don't see how this is going to be a, a successful ploy if they employ it, Brian. Well, they've, did it with the, they've done this with the geometric horizon, so they're likely to do it with the angle. I'm just stating. I'm not saying no. it's going to be successful. No, this is different. They, they, this that has already them. been done by, uh, sorry, John. This has already been done by Professor Phil, or just Phil. This with is different. Presupposing though. a model. Yeah, this is yeah, different. But, yes, hold on, hold on a second, John. Yes, that's correct. So Professor Bill uh, said, basically, Nathan Oakley states that we always have to beg the question of a sphere. Short pause. Well, Yes. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Before we were dealing with their positive claims and debunking them, right? And so then they just owned up to it and said, okay, so that positive claim's out the window, but it's still a sphere. Ha ha ha. This is different. We have the positive claim on the table that they're supporting. Yes. But that that they're making to us. Oh. Now they just have dingleberry dependency. There is a subtle difference, though. When they support us, as you phrased it, they are making an assumption. Now, I'm saying that from the prerequisite position that they automatically assume the ground is a curved surface. Therefore, when they move forward and do celestial navigation in support of us, they assume a flat plane. Now, you're saying that bit's in support of us. I agree. But when we do it, we do not make that assumption. That's not required of us. So the subtle difference is that if you're a globe believer and you want to snigger about how, of course, you establish it with a flat plane first, yet you assume that as a globe believer, as a flat earther, we just measure an angle. Well, that's what they're doing too, so maybe we should just call them the thing they hate, flat earthers. I already did. Exactly. I labelled them... 6, 12, 18 months ago as anti-flat earthers to keep flat earther in their name for that reason. No, I mean, go full full bore with flat earth because, I mean, just, just play the clips again. <laughs> Horizontal plane, yeah, it's flat. Yeah, yeah, that's how we have to do it. It's flat. I mean, they're possible little... to switch it up and use the spherical surface first? <laughs> or do we need the sure. flat? We can use the a flat surface. Okay, you say. We can use the spherical surface surf first. How'd you get an elevation angle from the spherical surface first? No, you wouldn't. You'd need a flat surface. Sorry, you wouldn't. That's <laughs> right. Now enjoy the slapping sound of a flat earth. That's absolutely correct. You wouldn't get an elevation angle from a curved earth. It needs to be flat first. I mean, flat that boy. says it all right there. Any balls You'll in here have, have a contention with, with... That nibble chocolate. I'm sorry, go ahead. Everyone's gone silent. Who is that? I'm saying it. They're the ballers that measure their ball flat. Yes. Well, they don't measure yeah. their ball flat. They just measure earth flat. You can't measure a ball flat. I mean, any Globers in here have any contention with what your your fellow mate Zanik over there said? 
I mean, we know most of y'all know that what he said was right because you need a flat plane to get your elevation angles. But I mean, does anyone have a contention against that? Like an argument against that? All righty then. Yep. Yeah, so um, debate's over. There are flat earthers now. They just don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you're saying now. You were saying no, anti-flat earther isn't isn't far enough, because they're measuring it and utilizing it as flat. So that's not an anti-flat earther, is it? That's a flat earther. <laughs> Basically, exactly. our opponents are on our side now. They always <laughs> yeah. kind of were. Anyway, we can we can call them delusional flat earthers now. That I like. But a flat earther in denial. No, 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 John. Flat out. <laughs> yes, they they are flat tarts now. But but the delusion only comes after they've taken this elevation angle measurement. So what? Uh, again, the whole question is how do you get the elevation angle off a curved baseline? Right? They're now telling us they're not doing that. You need the flat plane. Okay, flat earther. Thanks. Now. What you do with that measurement afterwards, you can go do whatever you want. You can go think the, the earth is a teddy bear, a car, whatever you want. But that elevation angle you got, you needed a horizontal plane for that. So thanks. Everything after that elevation angle is taken on plane with uh, on a plane. All other math they do is based on a plane. Just so you know. We don't need to go there, but just so you know, don't let them Jedi mind trick you. And all of a sudden, there's magic spherical trigonometry after you measured off a plane. No, there isn't. <laughs> yeah. Ask them to exactly. Know. Yeah, that, that's why I said that's where the delusion part comes in. Or well, you want to have a good now. get a baller and then ask them what a triangle is, and then get your popcorn out. We um, covered that a bit yesterday in the, the big one, is it if you're going to use spherical trig to solve this, which somebody did, the way they did it was fundamentally an approximation, and secondly, as they described it, for actually navigating impractical, because it would take too long to resolve. Yeah. Or, according to Zanuck, the lion, Surat, Numpty, dipshit, we can stand by a flagpole which is standing straight up in the air at 90 degree angle. Move back 400 meters, the elevation angle changes, as we all know. And as a special bonus, as you move back, that 90 degree angle of the flagpole also changed. That's essentially his argument. Yeah, yeah I trimmed it out. Annoyed... I trimmed it out when you pointed it out to him. That's members only at the moment, but it'll come out over the weekend. We, we, oh, but, yeah. but it, it wouldn't uh, change because you wouldn't be able to get that 90 in the first place, though. Exactly. Or we could just well, do it. Well, there's a bunch of problems. Done. There's a bunch of problems with that. Essentially, he, he's retarded, number one. Yes, there's a 90-degree angle making it a uh, flat level pain. Number two, you couldn't measure the elevation angle for the second time because... If that wasn't a 90, then you're not on a flat plane. You couldn't get an elevation angle. Right, we could go through all the nonsense after that, but I figure, why do it? Just stick with the first point, and the third graders start laughing. Yeah, start, start calling them flat earthers, Kiwi. <laughs> I shall not. <laughs> why? No, That's gonna they're, they're flat the hell out of them. <laughs> they're flat tarts. <laughs> they are flat tards now. They are flat earthers. Spear. Hello, boys. Yeah. That. Sorry, choppers. Flat. No, I'm just trying to see if they're <laughs> flat globers. <laughs> That's the yeah, best one. Flat, flat globers. Globers. That. I think that uh, could stick. Globers. Flat globers. <laughs> I kind of like that, actually. <laughs> yep. It's starting it's to globus. grow on me right now, like a fungus. <laughs> I used to like anti-globus. 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 I used to like nah, that. Nah, flat globus. I ain't nailed flat globus, but I would go with flat hearts. 
No, flat Globers. Flobers. Hel- yeah, that, it's yeah, a, it's yeah. actually it's actually heliosexuals. Uh, I call them heliosexuals what? or ballickers. Either one. That's all I got to add. <laughs> As a homosexual black lesbian woman, I find that highly problematic. <laughs> <laughs> but they're flat earthers first, so flat earther needs to be predominant exactly. in their name. Exactly. Yeah, flag lobers. We got it solved. Just let it go. It's it's fine. I mean, again, any ballers have any contention with what your your man Zanik said? Or or your man Virus? Well, everything Virus said was just a bad interpretation of what Zanik was telling him. Yeah, because Virus likes to remix the globe model and argue that <laughs> instead of arguing what the actual narrative is. He's funny like that. All righty then. Maybe uh, we can argue about whether dogs exist while we're holding Shih Tzus. That'll be next. Well, isn't this a nice little moment of tranquility? What about floorboards? <laughs> no, you got to get the flat really in there, you know, because they're they're preaching about the flat plane they need. They need to, so you got to get that flat part in to stick them good. Flat centric. Come off moot, Zach. Zach Tenacio, retard. Come off moot. Make some claims here, especially about the second law of thermodynamics, please. Surely doesn't have have a mic. Say again. He doesn't have a mic. Oh, you better go get a mic. You're not allowed in here. You're not allowed to chat skank anymore until you at least come in here one time. So every time I see you, I'm going to time your ass up. Watch. Time up. Bye bye now. I'm sure he would love to have a mic, but I'm sure they destroyed that technology and it's a painful process to bring it back. <laughs> well, they asked him in order to buy the mic, you have to first you have to first define a triangle or you can't buy one. So he'll never yeah. have one. That was funny. Can can we define it in a geometry we don't use? Yeah. Did you see last night I posted it in um, uh, the war room? Proto-thad numpty dipshit lion sewer rat demonstrated over and over again third grade geometry failure. I asked him, or somebody asked him what a triangle was, and, and he didn't define it correctly. I put it in uh, the war room. If you're watching this, you should pay close attention as an audience member to the things QE says. So when he says, for example, ask him what a triangle is and then go and get your popcorn. Somebody in the audience has gone, you know what, I might just try that. Hey, Nathan, I'm I'm sure you went over this before, but what was your epiphany moment that the Earth was flat and stationary? Math Pylon told me. Simple as that. That is it? It just clicked? Math Pylon said flat Earth, but he said it in a way um, that wasn't the way that people said it so if you take a vsauce video when they say flat earth they say flat earth the tone of the words are very different just those two words flat earth when math powerland said it it, he said it in a very different way that caught my attention because i I don't even remember actually watching him it just auto played onto math powerland caught my attention started listening to it realized what he was talking about went holy shit it's flat and all that flashed through my mind was all of the repping i'd done and the travel i'd done all over the world and the okay. questions i'd ask myself along those journeys 
about spinning, about it being flat, about how I'd love to go higher to see the curve of the Earth, knowing that you couldn't see it from the claimed uh, altitudes that you could cruise at as a passenger. So, there you go. You know enough to know when you were wrong, huh? Well, yeah, if you like. I don't know about being mm. wrong. I didn't see it in that way. I, I was very excited about it, so I didn't go, oh, God, I feel like I've been deceived. I was like, oh, my God, it's flat! Yeah, I always, I always well, use that Neil deGrasse saying, you know enough, but you don't know enough to know when you're wrong. And I think that applies to 99.9% .9 of the heliosexuals that come to argue about this subject. They don't know enough to know when they're actually wrong about something. Well put. Whether it be definitions or fucking anything. They just don't know enough yet. Oh, that's weird. That's right, exactly. That's yeah, what we yeah. got from uh, Virus yesterday. He, he can parrot off something he's been given by some compadre in the moment, but when that, which he didn't understand to parrot off, is debunked, he doesn't know it's been debunked. Yeah. Yeah. Goes right over their head. Whew. I, I was going to say, you come, you come to that realization that you were wrong, and it's not really that you were wrong, it was just like that wrong notion was planted into your head, but you also yeah. realize that your senses were right. Your senses have yeah. been telling you what this is the whole time. Yeah, for 30-something years, my senses were telling me that I'm supposed to be compensating for spinning around on a ball flying through space, but... It literally, I, when, I don't know if this will help you guys, but this actually helped, it literally unlocked my mind. I felt, I felt super emotions and like weird things when this happened. I was watching a time-lapse video of star trails, right? You know, they all go in a circle like that. And I wanted to test myself as I was watching Eric Dubay and all this. I was like, let me see. And I put, I put my face real close to the screen and I said, I'm on a flat and stationary earth and this is moving. And as soon as I did, it fucking went and it, the earth stopped for me. The earth stopped moving for me and that fucking dome started moving. I was like, oh my God, what in the hell? It tripped me out, man. You might want to do that. A little fun experiment. It Just watching the, if, see if you can get somebody else that's on a, uh, a ball to just picture in their mind for a moment that this can happen. And I think that, you know, that might break them free. I don't know. Maybe. Worked for me. An experiment, number one. And then you're not asking any questions, any ballers like that. Number one, they don't have any internal dialogue. Number two, they're all retarded. <laughs> I, I believe that. I believe that. I did, you don't have to believe it. It's demonstrated here daily. Just talk with one. Ask him well, to tie his was, shoes. We was Tell all retarded. Yeah, we was all retarded for a moment, just remember? Relax. We just relax. We just relax. We Ask them to turn their camera on and and show them tying their shoes. <laughs> Good luck with that. Good camera luck with that. on. How do you do that? Seriously. Yeah, I understand. I understand. But I hate it too. Wrong. I hate it too, man. There's no hyperbole in this. Yeah. But watch. Is so, shoes. so can we watch. can we help them? The shoes have the Velcro. You know that was. Uh, yeah, watch. I'll give you an example. We got a we got a baller right here. Coffee house. Watch this. What's up, baller? All right. Watch this. What's a triangle? Go ahead. Come off mute. Tell us what a triangle is, and then put a citation in here to back it up. I hear a uh, fat the flat earth always. That's not. Yeah, just relax there, buddy. I'm asking a question to Coffee House. Come All off right. mode right now and define a triangle. Normies, listen to how long this will take. He's <laughs> <laughs> searching for one. Maybe, He's Maybe the question right should be so hard. Maybe the question's too hard. Just, 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 just let the side Do you know marinate. Do you know what the question is, John? Are you being sarcastic? Yes, I was being very sarcastic. Yeah. Oh, okay. The question is define a triangle. You might come back with a round one. <laughs> it's a triangle. A triangle is something on the outside of the sphere. Hold on, hold on. You said a, a triangle's got atmospheric refraction. I said, I said he'll bring a, a triangle, but he said then it has atmospheric refraction. <laughs> I, I've got some I, 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 always, 
I, why can't we have, uh, why didn't they account for atmosphere re refraction during Eratosthenes' experiment? And why is it considered accurate with He's no He's never had an atmosphere? experiment. Well, yeah, his little pseudoscience demonstration or whatever he did. But, Thank you. Like, that like, that yeah, his, like, pseudo his pseudoscience presentation proved a flat earth. Yeah, I, I know that, but it's, it, they didn't compensate for the atmospheric refraction, which they all cry about during Bedford Level so much. It's because they're doing geometry. Uh-oh. They used a 500-mile flat plane to measure the angle to the sun, and we're wondering if it was an atmospheric refraction. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> just, just, a note, just a note, we still have not gotten the definition of a triangle. Just a note. Hmm. Well, you may not you know what? I'm actually Hold on a curious. Second, I'm going to look up the definition of a triangle right now. Okay. I don't want flat earthers spouting off what a triangle is. I didn't ask you. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to read it. Oh, I just wanna... Okay, I'm not Jason, read it. just one second. Coffee house. Are you there? See, so could thoroughly embarrass you just by giving the accurate definition of a triangle you realize QE. yes well, i'll take gonna... the loss on that one. Well, you just take <laughs> okay fine i'll start with my next question are you there coffee house the, the, you, the trouble is john is that if he did give the correct definition it's going to be devastating to his argument later on isn't it that yes sir and that's hence the silence. Mm -hmm. How so? How would it be devastating to just define a triangle? <laughs> if we're going to do, well, just the first bit, we're going to get an <laughs> elevation angle, aren't we? You're going to have to have um, some mic vigilance. John, we can Jason. move on Hold from on. Coffee Jason, Jason. because he's not going to answer. Uh, Hold on, just one I'll second. Just, here one one sec. just one sec. Just one sec. Jason. You're gonna have to stay on mute. Yes, sir. You're giggling through people and stuff. It's just cutting people's lines. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. Just if you're not actually making a point, keep yourself on mute. Like, yeah, that's all. Go ahead, tenth. No, that's yeah, I was gonna, QE. I was gonna say with a uh, no, but let me just finish uh, and then you can go QE. Uh, I was gonna say with a name like Coffee House, you'd figure he'd perk up, but not, not today. Not Coffee House. It's Coffee Hose. I'm oh, sorry. I I I misread it. So Extremis is in here. Uh, Nathan, you might want to ask him. He doesn't like to talk to me, but he's away chat skanking oh, no, well, again. He's been here for four I, years. I haven't established why it's devastating. I mean, I'll ask him if you want me to, but I don't. I, where I would go afterwards, I don't know. But I'm devastating the what? Just, just relax for a second. Let me finish what I'm saying. He's chat skanking in here. This is what he says after four years of being around us. Extremis. Is. According to the second law of thermodynamics, gas pressure moves from high pressure to low pressure, which should equalize the pressure. Why is this not what we see in reality? Why do we see a pressure gradient? Whether a dome exists or not, according to the second law, gas pressure should equalize. Why doesn't it? There you go. After four years, he puts this in my chat. Might be something to do with the sun gonna... increasing the temperature. It does. You get... It's following the law. Oh, sorry. My bad. <laughs> okay. He asked this question after how many times have we explained this to him? Uh, are you, uh, what are you, intentionally ignorant? Maybe you ought to ask him, uh, Nathan, because he's not going to answer me. Not going to answer that. Wise <laughs> move, by the way. Okay. If you are willing, extremists, this is your best opportunity because I have no idea where this is going to go. But can you define a triangle? I don't know why I'm asking. <laughs> Wait, what? Can you define what a triangle is for us? I know it sounds stupid. I don't know why I'm asking. I didn't know that's where we were going. I wasn't going that direction. No, no. I'm trying to segue away from you having to get into a wrangle dangle about fake space and just saving you that bother by asking you to define a triangle, which was previously the question on the table rather than the one currently on the table. Oh, okay. Uh, three sides and three angles. How about that? Not bad. That's still that's incomplete. Yeah, I was going to say you could do better. Are you sure three? What did you say? Three sides and three angles. Should the sides be straight, or can we have curvy? 
sides. I think that's acceptable. Um, no, I don't. From a it's not well, only because to have you can have three sides, couldn't you? Uh, but to have three angles, um, no. maybe the definition of an angle could clarify that definition of a triangle. No, no, because in that, if we apply his definition, I could argue legitimately that I can show a circle is actually a triangle, and I can do that on screen for you right now. Would you like me to show you? No, you're both wrong. An emotional relationship involving a couple and a third person with whom one of them is also involved. <laughs> That's a love triangle. There you go, Meekin. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Oh, let's try and get it in the, somewhere in the middle. So if we're not going to have straight as part of the definition for a triangle, I can argue that the, these three curved sides, if we accept that they're touching at the points, it's not quite, but these three curved sides actually create a circle. So therefore, I can argue that a circle is three curved lines. All right, there's no angles there. Well, there is. There, there is, but you'd have to change the meaning of the word angle. But I think we should just say the word straight because straight is the issue, isn't it? That's why QE well, said that, it was incom that, that was That's why QE point. says it was incomplete. A plain figure with three straight sides and three angles. Yeah, but hey, there's two issues. Incomplete. Incomplete. He said, no, don't he said it could define. Yeah, angles you don't need to clarify. speak to me. Relax, 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 relax. It is incomplete on two counts. Number one, what Nathan said about straight sides. There's another most important property of a triangle he did not mention. That's 180 why. degrees. Yeah, the antenna on the antenna on 180. Thanks for getting out of jail free card. We appreciate, you know, all the flat earthers jumping in and giving them the answer. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, for real, man. Oh, because obviously <laughs> it's, it's a secret. Hold on, guys. He's right. You know, this is basically the esoteric knowledge of triangles. Hold on. I was trying not to, to give the answer, hence why instead of just saying straight lines, Tony, I said, Am I in La La Land? Am I, am I going fucking nuts? Is it me, the one that's heading to the nut house? This is not secret information. We are talking about a fucking triangle. <laughs> <laughs> but we've still not got an answer. So we can only assume that we are in, 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 in possession of some highly secretive top knowledge that, you know, and we're truthers, we want to share it. The ballers clearly don't know Wait, Adam. It shoots the definition of a triangle. Oh, so, uh, is that Adam, so? Are you in possession of, of the book of triangles? Is that so, Pythagoras? What is it that you know that we do not? It's, this, it's, it comes in three volumes. <laughs> it's funny that the ballers can't circle back to us on the triangle. A bit louder. But, but... Said it's funny how a baller cannot circle back to us on the triangle definition. Louder still for the third volume. I said it's funny how a baller can't circle back to us on the triangle. A little louder, please. Adam was right. It does come in three <laughs> volumes. Uh, <laughs> Nathan really is doing good today. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. But the question. Uh, at hand truly is why didn't we get the definition from the baller or the two that we asked because it included the word like straight hat. straight's an awkward word it, it is now isn't it uh, I think but I don't think you, the ex-premises was trying to be sneaky I think you just gave just a generic description no I don't think there was sneakiness in that well, that's weird because yesterday when he tried to define it, he he defined it in non-Euclidean geometry. But today it's just oh, three sides and three angles. Hmm. I, I, was, I, I, was there I, I, a follow-up to the triangle right question? Yeah, on on the one eighty degrees. That's not necessary. <laughs> no. <laughs> is there a follow-up to yeah, the I see, to the, to the just, triangle? Uh, the question? penny's just dropped. What Adam's point is. The moment you say angles, you don't need the straight to qualify that. He's right. Because it can't not be, right, Adam? You don't need to qualify it. That's that's actually redundant if you say straight. Because you've got angles in part of the definition. So, so you can to add straight. to the straight. Yeah. You can add to what the definition of an angle is. That you can use the word straight. You also don't need to add 
the 180 in because if you've got three straight lines, three angles, <clears throat> can anyone show me a, a polygon of three straight lines and three angles the, where the angles don't add up to 180? No. Didn't I so, no. So what you're saying is based <laughs> yeah. on the, the, the inherent principles of a triangle, you don't have to define that because it will never violate that. It will always be that. And ultimately, when you're describing it with lines and angles, that's really all you need because anything in addition to that would be redundant. Because the definition of an angle includes the words to me in intersection of two straight lines. So, so he's inferred. Like so, so actually, just to give him props, Extremis was by far the most concise of all of us. Let's just get that clear. Yeah. I'd but that. Adam, but Adam, with degrees in math, was better. Okay, now we can move on to an elevation angle. No, no. Now I need someone to de 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 define for me a triangle. <laughs> a triangle. <laughs> yeah, a triangle. That's what they normally define. <laughs> they normally define things as triangles, not triangles. Yeah, I, I, I prefer the other one, Brian. Instead of saying angle, they've got curved angles. So we should the the, the word for that would be a kangle instead of an angle. Oh, I just, <laughs> what are you? What are you I, I just want to give. I just, Try want give, I just want to give QE a heads up on a, a debating tactic that he fell foul of yesterday without realising it. Are you there, QE? I only noticed this in editing, by the way, so I didn't catch it in the moment in case I'm sounding like I'm gloating. I'm not. You there? Clearly not. I'll wait till he comes back. Of course, I've just completely killed the moment with that response, haven't I? No, He's not going to come I, I, back I, I, if he knows if he knows you got him on something. No, I haven't He's got him on dumb. something. No, I have. That's not the case. I don't. He's not no, what, shy. Nathan, What's your help, Neil? You think he's shy? <laughs> Nathan, you didn't show the moment yeah. with that question. <laughs> what actually happened was you asked the question, and there was no response, and it was the lack of response that killed the the moment. Yeah, I know. But uh, you know, then as a host, I've got the responsibility to to salvage that dead moment, haven't I? So the yeah, onus is on me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, QE. Hey, sorry, he's probably getting a sandwich or something. Well, tell us. No. Why not? Because he'll be back shortly, and then I can tell you all at once. And hopefully by then, my short-term memory will have kicked it off and gone, and it'll annoy everybody <laughs> greatly. And then I'll remember after the live show, or after the show's finished, and I'll go, oh, yeah, that was it. No, I do remember. I will tell you because it's taken too long. I thought if I dragged it out long enough, Q would return and say, hey, did I hear my name? But he hasn't, so I'll carry on regardless. So what Zanix did was he... Suddenly there's a load of background noise. What's going on? While we were in the wrangle dangle about elevation angles proving a flat earth, and he's giving out some of the best ever quotes, he said, what you're using isn't affirming the consequence, right? And QE was all over it. But that was absolutely the intention of saying it deliberately wrong, knowing that QE would jump all over it and rumpus the in-play discussion to correct him and call him a numpty. There's nothing unjustified in that. He was a numpty, but they don't mind throwing themselves on the sword. Who's Zanik? Anybody know his name? No, nah, we'll carry on with that question. No, nobody knows who he is. A faceless potato. So do you think he cares about falling on his sword or making a stupid statement? No, he'll intentionally foul the ball and get sent off that's what i'll do we've seen it a million times so it was intentional when he said affirming the consequence yeah that was absolutely deliberate i think you're giving him far too much credit i think he doesn't know what the saying actually is i think i don't i wouldn't credit him with innocence no i don't think i think I'd... you're giving him far too much credit calling him a potato that's what i thought you were going to say Anthony. the fact that you can ascribe <laughs> him the benefit of the doubt means I'm going to now give him even more credit. Because to make you believe that he's not smart enough to realise that he's saying that incorrect is, is a testament to how good he is at what he does. He absolutely knows what an affirming the consequence is. He's heard it a million times. He knows the fallacy. I know he knows the fallacy. I know that when he says it, he's doing it to trigger QE in a moment that's, that's tactical. Like the foul you described with Geostreber. 
Yeah, I still get the think hell out of here. Credit. He doesn't know what a permanent consequent formological fallacy is, dude. No, he didn't say affirming the consequent, John. He said affirming the consequence. Yeah, that was. I the point. know what he said. He doesn't know what it is. Yeah, I don't yeah, think you wasn't... know Zanuck all that well, Z- uh, Nathan. Uh, I think you give him less credit. I think he's played you all for fools. No, nah, he doesn't know what it is. That, now, let's get back to something that was truly hilarious. Atkin virus yesterday, I don't know if you trimmed this up, but I caught it. I, it. I caught it like a minute later because I was too busy laughing when he said it. Atkin virus said, well, when we have the orthodontic view and, you know, there was so much noise. And then you, all I hear in the background from you is you go, what the hell does this have to do with teeth? <laughs> Maybe you just went to the dentist. <laughs> that I can say is just down to dumbfounded stupidity, unlike Zanuck. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of like applying Nathan's view on that. Like he must have said that intentionally to cause the distraction, because that no one gets orthodontic. My God, an orthodontic king. You're gonna you're gonna reiterate my point for the Dumbo that is virus as having been yeah. smart enough to go. If I say orthodontic, they'll latch onto that and it'll free me. It'll be a nice little segue to get me away from this awkward Yeah, yeah I can defending. totally see him doing that, yeah. No but not Zanuck, because he's right. too dumb. Oh. Right. Even though yeah, Zanuck yeah, was the one feeding virus. Yeah, You're all setting up a false think. dichotomy. You're setting up a false I can dichotomy. See, uh, I can see virus doing that since he can use the wisdom to. There's a third no, option. the eye teeth, you dummy. The God, third is... option is... Okay, can everyone stop third... interrupting each other? It's like getting root canal. The third the option teeth. is that he was, he was out of his depth. He was making a, trying to make an argument, and it's like a drowning man. He was just throwing things out that he had heard in the past. It was just a reflex reaction because he was out of his depth. Maybe. We don't know. We can't divine their motivations. This is pretty... Lowbrow. Yeah. I That's what I'm saying. Saying. Sorry. Brian, do, do you not yeah. think that three flat earthers arguing about the merits of ballers is probably the definition of a triangle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really good. Cool. A triangle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't think Zanik is stupid, but I don't think he's any kind of genius either. But what he is is he walks in the sneaky realm. Uh, like, he, I, I have to admit, he got me yesterday because uh, I was taken away from my uh, uh, conversation with Akin Boris when I had Akin Boris on ropes on the parallel zenith point to deal with 16 nautical miles per degree. I was corrected by someone who I was told was Zanuck on saying that, uh, that someone said you, one degree is sixty nautical miles, not one or not not like sixty, not like one nautical mile, right? And I had said what I had actually said was that one minute of degree equals to one nautical mile. But someone came in to give me this correction for no reason, just to, just to, it was a red herring, just to take me away from Akinvirus. And then when I came back in, Akinvirus was gone, and Zanik was there, and I was angry. So I was immediately angry that I was being corrected on something I wasn't up to saying and what I'm wrong about. And then a over virus is gone. And then Zanik would just straight out loud. So it's almost he, like he got me totally yesterday. They almost so. high-fived. One dropped as the other one pretty much took up the, the slack of the argument. So while there was that, exactly what you were describing, and I'll apologise because I took that bait, you know, I fell victim to it and it hijacked your point. I felt quite guilty actually when I listened back, yeah this morning at six o'clock in the morning i was like yeah i see why he's frustrated because you're you're on a roll and these two dicks just high five substitute one for the other with a load of obfuscation that i latched onto, ruining your point now i did get back on track but by the same token i totally appreciate your frustration my apologies i know it's not your fault it, it, it was on me i wasn't having the best day and i i, I fell for i was i focused too much on the red herring about this this correction that i didn't need and then uh, there was a switcheroo between Zanik and because Zanik had uh, Akin virus on his lap with strings, are, 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 you know, controlling. So he just took uh, took away the the puppet and he stepped in himself, you know. But is it, that it, one? So, yeah. I was going to say, is that when Nathan said, "Shut up, Brian"? No. 
probably. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Neil. Yeah, I, I, I was on me. I was on me. I, I, I was angry at myself all night last night for for uh, falling for such a stupid thing. But look, that's what they do. They work in twos and threes, you know, and that's how they work it. That, that's how they have to work it, you know. So they're not. Do you know how long Zanuck, it took me. Go ahead. I'm just saying, Zanuck is not stupid, but he's not a genius either. Oh, okay. he's fucking stupid. I don't think anybody considered the possibility that Zanuck might be a genius. I think that's a little bit too uh, optimistic. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's fucking stupid. You you don't know him. I know him. He he's a lion star rat. He's dumb as fuck. We caught him in a high yeah, school physics is. form asking questions that we asked him on. Oh, show. yeah. I remember that. <laughs> That's right. That was about five years ago, wasn't it? That's was ages ago. That was <laughs> when we was first, that, that was like a what? few weeks after we first met him or he came on the forum, whatever it might have been at the yep. time. Like literally within a few weeks of that. You dump that out, and you're like, "Is this? This is the same guy? Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, you y'all remember this? Here we go. Blame it on the rain. Yeah, yeah. Millie Vanilli. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, it's been a while. Well, it all came flooding back to me the last time he came in, and I was like, oh, "I don't want you. You're a liar." I just can't remember why. <laughs> it's, it's been such a long time. <laughs> I yeah, think he was I... trying to tell us how the second law of thermodynamics is not the law of entropy. Well, exactly. when I say... that's another one. His reference frames well, of fucking rotating uh, hot tubs and submarines. He's smart enough to be sneaky, and that's smart enough. To deal, to have to think about it. You're still because trying to defend this dumpty dipshit, Brian. Let me tell you something. He was around <laughs> here a lot longer, but way before you were here. He's a stone cold dumpster. No, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. The first time Zanuck even joined the he show was? was no, 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 he wasn't. The first time Zanuck even joined the show, about two weeks before that, he 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 messaged me on YouTube and asked me about going on to the show. And I gave him advice <laughs> two weeks beforehand. That's before so. Join. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks. I told him, don't beg the question. Don't do this. Don't do that. If you go in and address Nathan on QE, don't do this. Don't do that. Have your facts correct and have support for what you're claiming. So, so we is, have you to he, thank well, for hold all those hold on a special what moments I'm saying is, <laughs> Hold on a second. What I'm saying is while I'm eating is that he was here before you were on the show, Brian. That's what I'm saying. No, I came in when Ranty was... I came in with Ranty a good while before Ranty ever had ever had his uh, show. I was on what? Discord, and then what? I came in uh, on Mastery. I just wasn't on it all what the time. What date? I can vouch I want to Brian. Know Brian's, Brian's been out donkey's years. I've been in Flat Earth since 2015. I came onto the show in about 2017. I need the date. Well, enough. Uh, I was listening Again, before that, though. Enough of this. The guy is not. The guy's not a genius. Yesterday, he gave us the best flat Earth proof I've ever heard from a baller. What do you say? I don't have a what, date. Well, he confessed that he had to get the sphere Earth assumption after he measured a flat plane. I've trimmed those bits out. When are you going to play, play those? It again? I can play. Yeah. Play it again. Sure. Possible to switch it up and use the spherical surface first, <laughs> or do we need the sure. flat? We can you use the, the flat surface. Okay, you say we can use the spherical surface surf first. How do you get an elevation angle from the spherical surface first? No, you wouldn't. You'd need a flat surface. Sorry, you wouldn't. That's <laughs> right. Now enjoy the slapping sound of a flat Earth. That's absolutely correct. You wouldn't get an elevation angle from a curved Earth. It needs to be flat first. There you go. There's your yeah. genius. He, he double speaks every other breath. Did you catch all that? Are you talking to me? Keep it on repeat. Right, sorry. No, go on, QE. No, I'm saying he double spoke for about an hour. 
and and you caught him in one where uh, Chocolate challenged him, and it busted him because in one in one sense he said, "Yeah, you can, you can't get the angle other than a plane," and then immediately said, "Yeah, we can use a sphere Earth first. and then he goes back and forth about sixty five different times, really fast, right? Yeah, standard. He's a double speaker. Yeah, they're standard fair double speakers at the moment. Well, if that's genius, then my pet lizard is Mozart. <laughs> Nobody said he was a genius. I don't know where this has come from to say no. Yeah, no. I said he wasn't a genius. Yeah, nobody, nobody ever he's super smart, but he's not super dumb either. My original point, the reason this has come up, is because I suggested that when he said affirming the consequence, he was doing it intentionally to get you to pounce on it, which you did. No way. No way. No chance. He's not that well, smart. Then, no way. Then, See, Nathan's but then, but then, but then, uh, just, Kiwi, oh, God, just for Kiwi. But then afterwards, I then gave, or someone else, I think it might have been Chocolate, gave the exact same example with Virus doing the exact same thing. And suddenly, Virus was most definitely smart enough to do it exactly that way. Yeah, Kiwi, don't always, <laughs> attrib don't always attribute stupidity what could be pure malice. <laughs> That's handling Touché, That's copyright, Touché. by the way. The other way around, isn't it? Yeah. The other way around. No, no, it was, yeah, no, no, it was a touche moment. Alan was hard. being clever. Oh, oh, yeah. yes. When you Tony rephrase it. it the way Arwin's phrased it, yeah, that's what we're actually dealing with. That's correct, Arwin. Yes, my bad for correcting yeah. you. Yes, you're right. Touche, Arwin. That is a genuine application of touche, mate. Well done. <laughs> to ascribe malice to it, though, you got to give them intelligence. So which one are you going to do? Give them intelligence or call them stupid? Well, if it's virus, obviously intelligence. If it's Zanuck, well, obviously he's not a genius. <laughs> yeah, but he is sneaky and tricksy, you know? Akumu does like to play on people's feelings. He is like a pretty effective manipulator when he feels like it. So Another tricky employee. He might not, ah, he might not be... It's just changed the for Brian. Uh, hold on, Arwin. Brian. Yes. So another yep. trick he employed, and you're saying, no, I wouldn't fall victim to this. So we take the heat off QE. So what he said was, can you repeat that, Brian, after you'd made it nice and concise and clear? As soon as you started... Uh, Boris, is it? No, no, this is Zanuck. So as soon as you started to repeat it, he started to answer. So his crap answer to your question in regards to co-altitude was going to come through you and he had to make sure that happened. So what he did to make sure it happened and wasn't uh, concise, clear and well-defined for you to pick apart, he asked you to repeat what you were going to say. As you started, he started answering. And then when you were like, oh, didn't you just ask me to repeat it? It was like, well, I'm answering you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he, he knew I was flustered at that stage. He knew, he knew that I was angry at that stage. They know that I'm not great at dealing with more than one person. When it's just me and one person, no bothers, no matter who they are. But when it's me and a couple of people, people jumping in, even on someone on our own side, shout something in, that takes my uh, concentration away. So he knows that because he's dealt with me in that way before. But the thing about it is, is that he knew I was flustered at that point and he knew he could basically, he was free sailing at that point. Do you know what I mean? He didn't. He had his engines torn off. It was the wind blowing him along. He didn't have to worry about it. He knew he had me at that point. Yeah, but he's wrong. To... I mean, my points were correct. But he's exactly, your wrong. points he were is... correct. And, you know, although it took a reasonable amount of time, it's amazing how much fluff you can edit out with a piece of editing software, Brian, as you'll see as those videos start to come out. But with that, I'm going to say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and Chi Plus panels for making today's after show possible. And, of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Premiering streams for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, hitting the PayPal link, joining as a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and all that good stuff. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video.
Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!